hello, hello! What's up tonight, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome! Uh, what's up, Defra? Jay Zoller, of course, from Zaki Bowster, Pretty Ben Golan, how goes it? Joby41, Wazer Besks, Oversized Shady, out of college and on Wi Fi in my dorm is good enough for streaming. Looking forward to playing your favorite modern archetype besides. Pre-ban, in fact. Well, I'm actually kind of excited about this one. I think this is going to be a fun version of Tron. Warblars, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. What's up, everyone? I'm Substo, Ishthar, Yay That Steve, Gronk, Junk, J. Coon, Apex Predator, F4 Bastio, Sean Carter. How's it going tonight, everyone? Oh, I'm super excited. It's Tuesday, that means we're back after a crazy weekend. Oh my goodness, Iconic Masters, what a what a day it was with that coming out. Was it Friday when all that stuff came out? Oh, wow. That was one of the craziest days of spoilers. So Iconic Masters is looking like an awesome set. It's going to be so good for Modern, going to make prices go down. I was a little bit disappointed. Hey, what's up, D-Manny? I was a little disappointed that it didn't feel that iconic to me. I know Iconic has a lot of different definitions. I was talking to Jay Zoller with that, Super Mod Jay Zoller, uh, before the stream. So I... I know there's different definitions, but I was a bit disappointed that we were missing some cards that I thought were iconic or felt were iconic. Lightning bolts and counter spells, some of that kind of stuff. But it looks like a really sweet site, so I'm excited for that. And Ixalan is looking amazing. I can't wait for that. I Oh, man, it's just an exciting time to be a Magic player. It is super exciting. And chat is not working. Traditional. All right, let me reset the chat. It should start working. Uh, it should start working here in a minute. Hey, welcome, Beijing. Good to have you. Thanks for uh, hanging out. So, yeah, we're actually doing it. We're doing it. We're we're playing Tron. This isn't Tron Tron. This is definitely an ultra janky version of Tron. On the Fritz 99, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. Apologize in advance to both Seth and Maz. I'm dealing with morning sickness and a cold, and I'm very grouchy. Well, pretty pangolin, I hope you start feeling better. That is a lot of stuff to be dealing with all at once, so feel better soon. Uh, all right, so let's do our reminders. We can talk about Iconic Masters. We can talk about Ixalan. We can talk about, what do we have? Budget Magic yesterday, and against the odds, Tree Folk Tribal coming out tomorrow. Uh, Defa... 61, 10 months in a row. Janktron looks amazing. Yes, it does. Turn 3 spine. That's what we're going for. It's basically like a better card. <laughs> Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Yeah, we got some Pyromancer's Goggles. and I, So, Py, uh, Psionic Blast. I think I am responsible for that. Am I playing in U.S. Nationals? Uh, I don't really play paper. I probably should play paper more. But, no, I don't think I'll be playing uh, Nationals. Is that this weekend, Nationals? But I need I need to play more Paper, probably. I need to get a Paper deck or two to play Paper Magic. Maybe with Ixalan Standard, I'll put together a Paper deck for, uh, for playing at things like that. Uh, anyway, let's draw reminders that we can talk about the deck and all that stuff. What's up, Roll C? So, of course, the replay YouTube. If you want to check out this stream in the future because you missed some of it or any of the old streams, that's the place to go. This one should be up tomorrow at some point. Also, the normal YouTube, we had Budget Magic come out yesterday featuring some blue-green Emerge action in Modern. Also working on a super fun Budget Magic for next week in Modern. We're in the weird Budget Magic time. If you're a standard fan uh two weeks next week's episode will be modern the following week's episode will be modern and then after that it'll be hardcore ixalan standard all the sweet new cards for like a month straight at least we'll just be playing standard 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 in the new format super excited for it lots of things that i really want to try out in the new standard format uh so anyway keep that up also all the ixalan spoiler videos are still going and the merch page so uh if you want to support the stream and the channel and the site you can pick up some tokens or t-shirts or playmats and 
who knows, maybe in the future we will have some uh, <laughs> some stuffed scoops you can pick up. It would be pretty sweet to have, like, plushy scoops going on. Uh, and, of course, finally, donations are available down below if you're interested. $2 or more gets your message read on stream. So, yeah, let's talk about the Super Trashy Tron deck. So, the name, Mono Red Trash Tron, is not because we're trashing Tron or because this Tron deck is trash, although it very well might be. This is definitely a janky looking but it comes from trash for treasure which is kind of the unique card in this deck so this deck it's a mono red tron deck i think pleasant kenobi did a version of this not the same version this is from one of our infamous small japanese tournaments nesmith for the ninth month in a row welcome back to the fishbowl thank you for your subscription and also qdig welcome you as well big scoops here for both of you thank you thank you thank you so i think yeah so if you want to see something similar ish on youtube there is a build that pleasant kenobi played but this build is uh is not exactly the same this is a trash for treasure kind of artifact reanimator tron deck so we had a bunch of plans uh oh what's happening did i just click out of trash tron uh oh look at all these decks it's so time consuming to delete decks so i have years and years of decks look at all these decks where is mono oh it's m mono red Tron. All right. So what we got going on is uh, basically we are a Tron deck. So we are trying to assemble Tron. If we get all three Tron pieces, they tap for seven mana with their powers combined, which lets us play uh, Spine of Isha. We're not playing our Isha. We're not playing the Karns. We're a little bit different. We do have a couple Karns in the sideboard, but we're kind of this Tron burn deck. We do have some top end stuff, Worm Coil Engines and Ugins. Uh, we have one Blasphemous Act is a Wrath, but our main plan, our main main plan is to get out a Pyromancer's Goggles and have enough mana that we can double up a Banefire and lethal our opponent. So that's kind of our main plan. The other interesting part of this deck, it has some trading post Tron-ness to it. It's not exactly the same, not as locky as Trading Post Tron was, but you might remember that from Budget Magic a long time ago. We do have a couple Trading Posts, but we also have the Trash for Treasures, which is three mana, sack an artifact, reanimate an artifact, so we can Faithless Looting, for example, Tormenting Voice, discard our Staff of Nins, our Worm Coil Engines, our big stuff like that, our Spines, and potentially just reanimate them on turn three if we don't have Tron, because we can sack a random Chromatic Star, Mind Stone, something like that. So we have all kinds of crazy stuff going on in this deck. So that's kind of the plan. Plan A is to banefire people to death. Plan B is to get weird artifacty value, blow up our opponent's lands and whatnot with Spine, maybe some Worm Coil action. We do have a single Ugin as kind of a sweeper, which can also be a good win condition. The sideboard does give us some more options as far as finishers. I don't know if they're all great options, but we do get one Karn. We get another Ugin. We get another Worm Coil. We have an Emrakul the Promised End. We're not really built for Delirium, but eh, we make a lot of mana so we can potentially steal our opponent's turn some thought not seers a crucible of worlds to deal with ghost quarters and land destruction back to nature because we really don't like stony silence stony silence shuts down kind of everything we're trying to do and then relics and pithy needles relic for graveyards ancient grudges for artifacts and that's what we're battling with so we definitely are playing tron but it's definitely not what you think of as Tron. I'm actually excited for this. As much as I hate Tron, this has a lot of cards I like. I love Trading Post. Pyromancer's Goggles is a really cool card. So I think it should be interesting, at least. Uh, Duretti would be insane in this deck, but unfortunately, it is not legal in Modern. If it was if it was allowed in Modern, I would, uh, I would definitely play it. Did I lose a bet? So why are we playing this Tron deck is a good question. And the answer is it was a really popular instant deck deck deck. We didn't play it on video. I think it might have. It was either the most popular or the second most popular. But I think it was on the week I was on vacation and we didn't have an episode of of uh, Much Brew that week. So that's kind of what happened. So we just never played it and people still leave comments like, oh, when are you gonna play this deck? When are you gonna play this deck? So I decided tonight was the night. I really like Rick and Morty, I do. It's one of my favorite shows. Um, I'm a few one, two, three, 
three episodes behind right now. So I, I heard the latest episode was awesome, but I haven't got to that one yet. All right, so we're going to do a friendly modern league. Got to try to feed the feed the kids, win some chess, hopefully. Also, I've really gotten into BoJack Horseman lately. I <laughs> That's uh, Mike Arada, number six. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Yeah, I can't. I haven't figured out how to do the double speed voice for the live stream. I, I will keep working on it, though. Yeah, I've come around to, uh, yeah, I think this has been the best episode, uh, best season of Rick and Morty. I'm only through, what, one, two, three, four episodes, I think, so I'm, like, halfway caught up? Maybe five, but it has seemed like a really good season. Also, the new, uh, the new seasons of BoJack Horseman have been really good. I was actually surprised. I originally watched it when it first came out, and I didn't like the first season, so I never watched any of the other seasons, but then some people started telling me that... The new seasons were a lot better, so I decided to give it another chance, and it definitely is super awesome. Like, seasons two and seasons three are actually really, really good, so I'm glad I gave it another chance after a disappointing first season. Yeah, I've been definitely happy that I gave it another shot. Yeah, I haven't got to season four yet either of BoJack. I'm partway through season three now, because I'm trying to catch back up. Rick and Morty should end with... Morty finding the courage to kill Rick. I guess that would be a good ending. Hey, Seth, went to my first big modern tournament on Saturday. I went 5-0 and won a Liliana the Veil vale playing Infect. Oh, well, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Actually, that's super sweet. And it's cool to see Infect doing well again. I've lost to Infect on Magic Online recently uh when it hadn't really been around in quite a while. So maybe it's comeback time for for infect timothy six months in a row tron today in fact on thursday i don't think so <laughs> hopefully not maybe if there's a uh, in fact deck with trading post in it maybe you could convince me but until that day <laughs> do i like gardening no not especially Ended up changing it to a 3-2 split with Lightning Helix. Went 4-0 with... Ooh. Yeah, the Braid and the Blood Moon decks actually seem sweet. So what do we got in this hand? Eh, I guess this is fine. We have dual Urza's Mines, but we got a couple of Cyclers. Pyroclasm could be relevant, depending on the matchup. Marsh Flats for our opponent. Will I ever build Infect for Commander Clash? Uh, probably not. I don't think that Infect is especially a fun Commander Clash deck. People, I don't think it makes for, like, a fun Commander Clash episode. Plus, everyone just tries to kill you first. <laughs> uh, if Infect ever got good, people would be able to play Solemnity and, and make it less good, but... People uh, people don't really play Solemnity because no one really plays Infect. But if Infect makes a uh, comeback, it will definitely be relevant. Rock is for the 11th month in a row. Great to see me bite the bullet and play Tron. Burn is next. Uh, you never know. I, just because we're playing Tron doesn't mean we're going to play all the decks I hate now. Don't read too much into this. <laughs> but thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Uh, theme for the next Commander deck... I don't think we actually have a theme yet. Let's play Chromatic Star, play Urza's Mine, and pass the turn. Maybe our opponent, our opponent could play Liliana. Oh, come on, play Liliana. Make us discard. Ugh, it's a goif. Hmm. All right. So I guess this means we got to crack. Actually, we should wait till our rain phase. Another star. So crack this. Add red. Draw a card. Another groove. Play star. Play star. Play a land. Pass the turn. I guess we can trash for treasure a star to get back expedition map? That doesn't sound like the greatest plan. Yeah, we don't have a theme for next week, but we got to figure it out. What do you think of Emrakul the Promised End in a modern shell? I think it can be pretty good. I think it is... Somewhat underrated in modern, actually. Opponent gets in with the goif. Yep. Hits us for a lot. Down to 17. Jankytron is the best Tron. Ooh, it's a power plant. Um, 
Now we have options. Ooh, three dollars from Icy Doc. Oh, I'm gonna have to pull. I'm gonna have to pull this up. Hang on. Was not fast enough. Thank you so much for the donation, Icy Doc. Pulling up the the text right here in the dashboard. So from Icy Doc says. Can you do an MTG Finance article about the EV of Iconic Masters pack hanging from the announcement? Wait. Can you do an MTG Finance article about the EV of an Iconic Masters pack changing from the announcement to market stabilization? It would be really cool to see how much cards change in value. Actually analyze. Love your stuff. Uh, I think that could actually be a really cool article. I think I, I would probably have to be a month or two down the road, but I'm definitely down with trying that. Do you think temper? Do you like Tempered Steel? Uh, tempered Steel's okay. Oblivion Ring I do like. This, is, this isn't Tron Tron. This is good Tron. <laughs> actually i think so the future of commander clash the episode going up friday actually we should make a play here before we run out of time remind me i will talk about what's happening with commander clash because i'm excited for it uh do we just all right let's just pyroclasm kill tracker i think pyroclasm kill tracker Play a Tron piece, pass the turn. So now, worst case, if we don't draw into something good, we can trash for treasure a Chromatic Star, get back Expedition Map. Expedition Map gets Tron, but we still need a payoff for that to matter. And we're taking a lot of damage from this Goyf. Pona hits us. Yeah, down to 12. Follow up. Oh, come on. Nothing scary. Nothing scary. Oh boy. Uh, so what outs do we even have here? Do we have outs? We're just dead next turn to Siege Rhino? Ugh. Ooh, man, we're a mana short. One, two, three. One, two. So I guess we just gotta hope we hit our missing Tron piece so we can play Worm Coil and hope our opponent doesn't have path? Come on, Urza's Tower. Tower? please or maybe faithless looting discard worm coil would also work come on deck we gotta crack the stars we don't have a choice ah oh, come on we're so dead on board and our opponent's gonna bring in like fulminators and stuff harold darido 10 months in a row i know it's not happening anytime soon but in the event that Arena replaces MTGO, have you heard of any fair or realistic ways to compensate large, valuable collections? Well, Alredo, uh, thank you for your subscription. Welcome to the fishbowl. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. This doesn't work, does it? We play that, two mana to crack it, five mana. Is there any way, so we just have to... Um, I have not heard of any way of compensating for collections. Uh, the skeptical version of this would be that treasure chests and so forth are sneakily an effort to bring down values of collections, so it's not as big of a problem when that time eventually comes. Uh, the good scenario for players, the best scenario, would be somehow wizards just, like, cuts checks to everyone or uh the middle case scenario is you somehow get your collection to transport over but if you have four thousand dollars of moto cards you can turn those into like four thousand real dollars four thousand dollars of arena cards since they're not tradable so but i think that's a long time in the future so i don't really want to worry about it yet we do have we do have some maps we got a map in hand so, one, two, play map, crack map, five mana, die. Trash for treasure does nothing, die. Well, I guess we just got to keep cracking stars and hope that we just peel our missing Tron piece. Or a mountain. And, yeah, I mean, we are quite literally dead. We are just a mana short from doing anything. All right. Well, a disappointing, a disappointing start for Mono Red Tron. All right, come on, Trash Tron. The other thing I don't really want to do with this deck is just bring in all the typical Tron pieces. That seems like a bad plan. Um, so what do we want 
maybe worm coil is good maybe the other ugin is good they're probably gonna bring in land destruction so maybe crucible is good ah, i'm not 100 percent sure though my star sorted full proxy legacy as a test i built four color chains of mestopheles that card is messed up in combination with dak fade and that card is just messed up all around yes more rough drafts are coming we had one we had a ravnica edition that came out not this past thursday but the previous one and there will be a new episode on this thursday so only a couple days away from the next episode shooting for every other week at this point oh so commander clash all right so there's an episode going up friday that'll be episode 24 of season three then there'll be an episode the next Friday, which will be the 25th and final episode of season three. Then there's going to be a break of like one to two weeks. But over that break, we're going to have a super special live episode here on the stream. Everyone's going to be streaming. Uh, Jennifer, Tom, Tomer, me. And we're going to do a live episode over the mid-season break going to season four. And that will also go up on the website as the episode for the week so keep an eye out for that i will definitely be letting you know a little bit ahead of time uh when that'll be so you can plan on it because i think it's going to be super sweet and then the week after the live stream episode they'll jump into season four starting with most likely ixalan commanders so i think that's the timing episode one of season four should be the exploration of Innistrad on Commander Clash. So I'm super excited. Wrapping up a season, a live episode, which I, if we can have it work, I would love that to be a tradition every season. I think it would be super sweet. I think we take out Pyroclasms. They don't seem like they're going to kill our opponent's stuff very well. Bring in those pieces. We got to take out something else. Take out a Lightning Bolt. Maybe something like, well, hmm. Lightning Bolt can occasionally kill things. Anger is better with Pyromancer's Goggles. I guess so is Lightning Bolt. Well, we'll go down one bolt. Let's try it like this. This might be okay-ish. Even a doubled Pyroclasm doesn't kill a Siege Rhino. All right, let's try it like that. What do you think of start cashing back my MTGO collection? I have just started building it, though. So I am not the least bit worried about magic online in the near future they actually had an interview on limited resources about geez we just ain't got no tron pieces all right well good news is since we don't have any tron pieces our opponent uh probably won't try to kill our lands and we can sell them into pyromancer's goggles and that's something um so yeah they said it's going to be at least two years before magic arena is ready for a wide release uh, an actual release. So even if there's a chance that Magic Arena is going to replace Moto eventually, that t clock doesn't even start ticking until two years from now. And then I'm assuming it's probably years and years after that that they would even get to the point of putting modern on magic arena putting legacy if it even ever comes to that so i think for the near future i don't have any concerns about magic online just because the the time frame is so far in the future at this point uh, grim flayer well now we might just have to kill that we really don't want our opponent to start scrying man all the groves slow hero for the seventh month in a row welcome to the fishbowl thank you for your subscription big scoops here for our new subscriber yeah i guess we just anger into solemn and just ramp naturally hope we draw some worm coils and we're just like mono red ramp oscar minilov welcome to the fishbowl thank you for your subscription big scoops here for our new subscriber would it have an Ixalan theme? Seems weird to waste effort of coding Ixalan and have it not be a standard release. Well, it's going to be, um, oh dear. That's bad for us. No solemn next turn. Well, all right. Luckily, we weren't on the Tron plan anyway. <laughs> oh boy. Well, we can ramp quite a bit with this hand, even without Tron. And this means we're less likely to draw more land, so... So let's look on the upside. <laughs> oh, maybe this is a good thing. It's a good thing they killed our Tron land and surgical it. Uh, Jeskai Sahili deck. Hmm. 
That's interesting. That is a lot of combos jammed in there. It looks really fun. I'm not sure about Sword of the Meek Thopter Foundry included, but it sounds, it looks really cool. I'd have to try it out in practice. Yeah, this feels like a white border kind of, a white border kind of uh, land. Eh, Grove is often used as the duel in the Tron decks because you don't really care about your opponent's life total. So it just ends up being kind of a untapped dual land. Well, Lightning Bolt off Pyromancer's Goggles can be good. Uh, Deckmore for the second month in a row. Name the first random card you think of. Uh, Bolduvian Shaman. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new holy subscriber. That is a... Oh my goodness. Man, our opponent just had like... Oh, that's a Worm Quail though. All right. Well, if our opponent doesn't have Path, life is super awesome. And we are probably going to win. If our opponent does have path, life is super sad and we're probably going to lose. That's that's the situation we're in. <laughs> uh, Mark of Confusion, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Well, we might as well trade in this Solemn for a card and some damage. Can you explain why Emmerichel Emmer the Promised Ant... Uh, uh. Emrakul the Promised End is never on socket card hoarder for the last four weeks. Only the foil version for 13 ticks instead of the normal version for three ticks. Uh, I actually have no idea why that would be. Eh, there's the Rhino. All right. Well, it, it's the path math. Oh, man. Our opponent needs path this turn or we get a second. Come on. No path. No path one time. Worm coil down. Come on. No path. No path. No path. Anything but path. Oh, this is going to be super close. Right now, we're down a game, and this is our first match. We're going to even it up if our opponent doesn't have path, though. Can the chat help me understand if I cast an X spell for a mana... F All right, Lingering Souls. That is not a path. Opponent passes. Well, I think we just Worm Coil, number two. And... I think we're going to attack with a Worm Coil. Start the life gain going. Opponent's going to... Yup. Yeah, well, we'll kill Tarmogoyf. And your Spirit Token. Get some to... Alright, we're good. We're good. Worm Coil coming through. The Judgeinator. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Alright, Inquisition can take Bolt or Crucible. Not a path, though. I feel like we're super stable now. Hey, what's up, El Arico? Enjoy your work. Yeah, so you can always catch it on the... Ooh, tireless tracker. All right, you can always catch it on the replay, YouTube. Opponent passes. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> we drew all three of our worm coils. You know what's good against a mid-rangey Tarmogoyf deck? <laughs> Probably drawing all the worm coils. <laughs> yup, yup, we'll do that again. <laughs> Pass the turn. Hey, what's up, Joby? Good to have you. Oh, and thank you. Yeah, skill game. It's a skill game. Three of three. Well, we didn't assemble Tron Tron, but we did assemble Worm Coil Tron without, <laughs> without any problems. <laughs> and in theory, Worm Coil Tron should be much harder to assemble than, than normal Tron. <laughs> uh, yup, takes our Crucible. Well, there's a Tron piece. Well, let's go attacking. Uh, we're so far ahead, I think we just start getting in with everything we can. Trying to close out this game before our opponent draws out of it with their clues and such. Maelstrom Pulse would be super annoying. Man, Trading Pulse would be good. Trash for Treasure to get back Worm Coil would be hilarious. Oh, man. Trash for Treasure with Pyromancer's Goggles. That would be so sweet. We could get back two Worm Coils. Oh, man. Come on, Trash for Treasure. That would so make my night. 
Uh, how many Fatal Push promos do you have? I have two. I don't have any so far. But I don't really play paper too much, so it hasn't been a priority. And our opponent... <laughs> oh, they had their sideboard cards to deal with Tron, but... Scumbles to Worm Coil Tron. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> that has to be so depressing, because when you play... When you play against Tron, you're hoping that that's what you draw. You're like, oh, I got Fulminator and Surgical. I I can't lose. Like, that's exactly the hand I want against Tron. And then, uh, yep, <laughs> Worm Coil happened. Ormin, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. We need an Against the Odds for Mechanics. Ooh, that could be fun. I kind of want to do something a card build around next week because we've had the last two episodes have been tribal so i kind of miss like a a janky build around card deck so uh we will get to it though also we're gonna have the new uh train planeswalker rule oh the traverse monastery mentor deck looks super sweet that's super spicy grixis pirates uh, Bogus Banana, oh, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. If you increasing vengeance from the graveyard cast with Pyromancer's Goggles, can you copy it forever? Um, uh, I don't think so. I'm confused, though. I would have to read exactly what that card does. Uh, the Grixis Pirate deck looks super sweet. Uh, it looks like a good curve. I've been holding off on brewing with the tribes from Ixalan so far, because I want to see the rest of the set get spoiled. Uh, Mech Pro is definitely a fun build around. I expect that we will probably revisit Mech Pro with Revel and Riches. It seems like that could be a fun, ultra janky deck. Oh man, I'm also super excited for Marionette Master with Treasures. Ooh, Treasures, Mech Pro, Revel and Riches... We will never win a game, but we will have a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> it sounds so janky, but so fun. Yeah, I mostly just want to see the curve filler. Like, are we going to get another red one drop, for example? Things like that. That's the stuff. Maybe we just go down the bolts for pyroclasms. Yeah, whatever. At least pyroclasm get rid of an entire board full of lingering souls tokens. Gonna brew around Dire Fleet Ravager. Yeah, I mean, we'll probably Panharmonic on it <laughs> and kill ourselves, but it does sound kind of fun. Oh, man. This is what Tron players experience. We are the ones with the Tron nuts. Land, Expedition Map, Crack It, Land, Turn 3 Tron, Pyromancer's Goggles, Gotcha. Oh, I never finished Intruder Alarm. I never was able to make the combo work. Connolly Woods has been playing a super spicy Intruder Alarm combo deck, though. All right, come on. No Abrupt Decay. Abrupt Decay is the one card that would make us super sad. I guess Fulminator, too. Blooming Marsh. Godless Shrine. Untapped. And Tarmogoyf. All right, so we're going to be able to assemble Tron. Assuming no Fulminator Mage. Play Power Plant. Pass the turn. Come on, no Fulminator. One time, no Fulminator. Uh, Merfolk, right now my tribe rankings from Ixalan would be Pirates, Dinosaurs, Merfolk, Vampire. So I think they have a shot, but I think that they're behind the other two in terms of how competitive they look right now. But we still have cards to be spoiled, so that could change. All right, we have tower, we have power plant. So get Urza's is mine. I think that's what a real Tron player would do. Players is mine. MTG Undaddy for the sixth month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. So how do we do this? How do we destroy our opponent? The Silver Fox plays. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Uh, we can... Pyromancer's Goggles is, what, five? We have three left. I guess we just Worm Coil. Seems reasonable. <laughs> Our opponent's Nightmare has returned. 
follow it up with chromatic star pass the turn and then if they can't get us off tron then we just ugin and ugin away the goifs and life is super good yeah i mean you can never go wrong with a worm coil yeah that sounds about right um stuck well opponent has path well good news is we can land and we still have ugin opponent gets in with the goifs okay y'all and passes <laughs> oh man i really want to just play another worm coil but i know this has got to be the correct play ugin and we will just negative two ugin go away tarmogoyfs play the land pass the turn man tron is super powerful when you have it together <laughs> Uh, we're playing Janktron, though. This isn't real Tron. This is Janktron. Like, I mean... Oh! Oh! Yes! Oh! All right, don't scoop, opponent. Don't scoop. Play that. Play that. Oh, man, next turn. Next turn, Banefire. Don't scoop. No scoopage. No scoopage. You know what? Because we don't want our opponent to scoop, we're not even going to activate Ugin. Because if we activate Ugin, they might scoop. But if we don't activate Ugin, they're going to think, oh, this guy is horrible at magic. Why would I scoop? Oh, no, it didn't work. Oh, the next level intentional <laughs> missed activation of the Planeswalker didn't work. <laughs> we tried. We tried so hard. <laughs> Yeah, opponent's ghosting. Opponent's definitely ghosting. <laughs> uh, wow, so far so good for Trashtron. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, and then that way, next time I miss a Planeswalker activation, um, accidentally, I can play it off to all of you like it was on purpose and we were next leveling our opponent. <laughs> <laughs> the long con. I'm setting y'all up for <laughs> to to counteract a future pun. <laughs> oh, so much fun. All right, let's go to round two. Any recommendations on a simple, cheap video editing software? Uh, so I use Lightworks, which is actually free, although I think you have to pay something to export in, like, super high dial, like 1080 and higher. So... That's what I use. Normally when I say that to real video editors, they're like, ugh, <laughs> what's wrong with you? But that's what I use, and it works for me. So it's simple. It's pretty easy to pick up. I'm definitely not a professional editor, and it does everything that I do on the channel. So any chance that the new Merfolk will show up in Modern? Uh, nothing has jumped out to me. I think you can debate the legendary maybe as a one of instead of Kira. I tend to think that you still want Kira because it's better protection. I think by the time you play your three mana Merfolk, you want it to hard counter a path to exile because your opponents already have three mana. So they'll just pay the extra mana, kill your Lord, kill your other stuff. So that's the one I think has the best shot though so far. That pirate counter spell looks OP. I hope Merfolk get a cost reduction card as well. Yeah, the pirate counter spell looks super good. I'm really excited for pirates. They look like fairies or something. It's going to be a really sweet tempo deck. Uh, this hand is okay, assuming... I mean, we can put together Tron. We have Wraths if our opponent's a creature deck. If our opponent's playing combo, though, we're probably going to be in trouble. Trading post Infect. Did you just brew this, Jay Zoller, to try to make me play Infect? <laughs> <laughs> you found it oh someone re really did it all right wow abzan again what is this abzan league what is what's the cost payment plan for arena duels they have not announced that yet that's the other thing i learned listening to the interview for uh, unlimited resources a lot of stuff is not really known yet hey awesome dude going well good to see you how's it going for you a lot of stuff is just unknown at this point there was so many things they were like oh well is it going to be real limited and they're like oh well you never know it's going to be cool we're we're thinking over our options 
And they're like, oh, well, uh, what's the pricing model going to be? Oh, there's tons of cool things you could do. Uh, could we have codes and packs like Pokemon? We're looking at everything. I mean, it's going to be sweet. So I get the impression that they really need people to get on the beta and give them advice. So if you want... If there's stuff you really want, like, sign up for the beta and make your voice heard, because it sounds like it's seriously not decided yet. Dev the Rev Ryan, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops cheer for our new subscriber. What is happening? That's a glittering wish. Are we getting comboed? Oh, please don't be Cheskai Ascendancy. Fulminator from the sideboard. <sighs> okay. Well, play the land. Pass the turn. Man, main deck Fulminator thanks to Glittering Wish. It is going to be only PC upon release. However, it's built in Unity or something. Something that allows them to put it on other things in the future. Well, we got to search for a land. Well, this is not ideal. I don't know what our opponent's doing, other than playing lots of colors. So, crack, get a, another mine. Pass the turn. Boom, and what do we draw? Alright, well, run out expedition map. Run out Chromatic Star. Well, we got a chance of assembling Tron still, although we still don't really have a payoff, and we haven't drawn a, a trading post this entire league. Opponent passes. Ooh. All right, that makes our life even easier. Play Tower, pass the turn. JJ Player, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. I really like the two-drop merfolk, the two-drop explorer merfolk. Oh, this is what's... This is a glittering gifts. What is going on? I mean, we're losing, but... What is happening? Deck I've been working on lately. What do you think? Well, let me see, 12 Tacos. Opponent gets Iona on Burial Rights. Well... The only bit of good news is we have a lot of colorless stuff. So Iona is not as game over against us as it would be against a lot of decks. Also, we had a worm coil for racing purposes. So this actually could work. Ooh, that deck looks sweet. I really like Lightning Angel and Mantis Rider. We had a sweet budget magic deck with that. And Goblin Guide and Delver give you good one drops and Swift Spear. Looks uh, pretty solid, like a Jeskai Agro Flyers deck. Yeah, our opponent's going super deep. I've never seen Glittering Wish with Gifts Reanimator before. Eh. Alright, I guess we bolt your face. Since you're going to Iona us anyway. And then you take our Anger and we play a Worm Coil. If they don't have Path, I mean, Worm Coil beats Iona. Huh, Bionic Broccoli. Ugh. Um, well, I will have to figure out how to check into that. I'm sorry for the trouble, but Big Scoop's here for you. And I will have to have to look into that. I've never had that happen before. Hopefully I can look into it and uh, let you know something Thursday if it doesn't just pop up. Do you think Magic Arena will affect card prices on Modo? Um... Long term, it's definitely a possibility. I'm taking kind of a wait and see attitude to see how well Arena does. Short term, it's pretty unlikely since from what we're hearing, it's going to be at least two years until Arena releases. So based on that, it seems unlikely that anything's going to happen soon. Price wise. Three dollars from five nine five zero two four one three. My favorite number name. Uh, are, you're playing Tron. You're evil. So are we playing Trashy Janky Boggles next? Uh, no, no, no. Don't read too much into this. Thank you so much for the donation. Don't read too much into it. It doesn't mean I like Tron. We don't have Aldrazi temples. Doesn't mean we're playing Boggles or Infect. Nothing like that. Eternal Witness. Oh. 
Okay. What, gets back Fulminator? Is that what's happening? Gets back Thoughtseize. Okay. Godless Shrine. Interesting. Well, our opponent's down to five. Well, let's crack Expedition Map. Tower Mine. We need a power plant, and we need a colorless payoff. That's what we need. Banefire's going to be off the table because of Iona. Our Worm Coil's gone. Come on, deck. Oh! Ha 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 ha! Uh, yes <laughs> actually let's let's crack a lad first so you don't know that we drew it <laughs> uh, oh sometimes it's good to be lucky and be a tron player <laughs> the turn before iota would come down uh yeah and big enough to not be counterable <laughs> we got him <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got him. Schnapps and Phantom S, MTG. Welcome you both to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops cheer for our new subscriber. Oh, man. The bad news is I might be becoming addicted to Tron. Oh, man. Getting lucky and killing people. This is what my opponents do to me all the time, and it kind of feels good to be on the other side where you're the one that's top decking... <laughs> Ridiculous fouls with ridiculous amounts of mana. <laughs> Ooh, yes, yes. Oh, man. Oh, I could feel the Tron power. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to do anything. Our opponent just killed themselves that game, essentially. Uh, all right, so our opponent's playing a graveyardy deck. We probably want to minimize, since we know Iona is a real thing. Huh. We probably want to minimize the chances of getting destroyed by Iona on red. Ninja Tribal. Ooh, that would be sweet. Try. Uh, I still. I hate Eldrazi Temple. I. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go any further with that. And. Even as I'm doing this, I will admit it's probably pretty unfair that we are tapping three lands for seven mana, but... Ooh, Boggles with Mana Tithe. That's closer to what I would, would play Boggles. I do love some Mana Tithe action. Ooh, Helioid's Pilgrim. That's a pretty good creature that never sees play for some reason. Uh, what do we want? We need something. I mean, we can just bring in more big colorless stuff. Like, Blasphemous Act doesn't seem good in this matchup, really. Pyroclasms probably aren't good. We probably should bring in Crucible. Should definitely bring in Relics. Maybe go down a Goggles for a Karn. Go down a the Lightning Bolts, maybe? I still don't know what our opponent's deck's doing exactly. For, I guess we could go Thought Knots. Ugin is also fine. Maybe try something like this. Just kind of like minimize our reliance on colored spells. Archwilt, welcome to the fishbowl for the fourth month in a row. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. We can double the anger. I just don't know. I'm ex Our opponent might have more creatures than they're letting on. Let's try it like this. We haven't drawn a single trash to treasure yet, or haven't cast one. Do you think the issues with standard for the past couple of sets is because they wanted to make magic more story-driven and less gameplay-driven? Well, all right. This hand's interesting. I guess we can keep it. Lots of big colorless stuff. I mean, I think that's part of it. They wanted to make magic story-driven. They're playing some sort of crazy five-color glittering wish, uh, wish gifts reanimator deck. It's basically just like a whole bunch of craziness. Moonbear, hey from the U.S. Big Fudge. Moonbear, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. I don't know where Emmer Cool is supposed to be. I don't know. It's such a weird sideboard card in this deck. 
control, I guess, is what I'm picturing, where you can get the steal your turn trigger even through a counter spell. That's the thing that makes the most sense to me. We're on Janktron, though. This is Janktron. We're not playing real Tron. Ooh. All right. Well, if our opponent's fulminatoring here, it's going to be bad because we're super light on lands. Ooh, Jeskai Flyers, eh? Civic Saber. That can make a Mantis Rider even more threatening. Do you think any of the visors are good enough to build a deck around? Uh, advisors. Wait, what are advisors? Did I miss something? Uh, Relic was a decent draw. Gonna mean the reanimation plan is not going to be easy. We do need to draw lands, and if they have a Fulminator, things are pretty sad and miserable. Yeah, Stealing an Ancestral does sound pretty sweet. Oh, Chimney Joe, I'm so sorry. Welcome to the fishbowl. It might pop up in a minute. Sometimes there's this weird delay. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops cheer for our new subscriber, Opponent Cracks. <laughs> yeah, we got our trash for treasure. Ugh. Well, if we don't draw... Oh, my goodness. If we don't draw lands, we're just going to lose to Seizure, I know. <laughs> oh, this feels so bad. Well, I think we got to do this. All right, there's a mine. All right, I mean, let's... Let's have the Tron luck and just draw our missing Tron piece. Now we are open to reanimation. Oh, come on, missing Tron piece. That would make life so sweet. Opponent passes. Come on, Urza's tower off the top. Nope. It's a big expensive thing we can't cast. Does our opponent have gifts too? They do. Yikes. Uh, this is not, this is not going to work. Who would have thought we'd run into so many Siege Rhinos? Siege Rhino League. Uh, we're going to have very many fewer outs now that our opponent's going to Iona us. Uh, I don't want to play real Tron. I am still don't like real Tron. Uh, oh, Ashen Rider? All right. Well, unfortunately, we had to crack our relic, and we are now punished. Actually, I think we're just dead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're dead. There's no, there's nothing we can draw to come back from that. Uh, I don't know what this is against. One of the jankiest five-color decks I've ever seen anyone play. Uh, okay, so maybe we do need Blast... Uh, I don't even think we need Blasphemous Act. Just run it back? What is going on in this deck? I mean, maybe we keep Blasphemous Act? Oh, boy. I don't know. What should we be doing on the sideboard? Should we be changing anything else? Let me see, Phantomness. Enemy Sacrifice. Ooh, it's kind of like Demon Stompy almost. That looks pretty fun. You got some big, powerful flyers. Gatekeeper's a really good card. Looks like it could be a pretty sweet budget option. Yeah. Bring in Squid Mom. Ah. Hmm. How do we streamline the game plan? Hey, welcome, that Chung. Good to have you. Emrakul? Over what? A Banefire? Like... Banefire doesn't seem that good here. All right, let's let's try it like this. Oddly, Blasphemous Act is just a one of the best red wraths. As odd as that sounds. Well, we do get to be on the play here, which is good. Which, eh, maybe that's going to help us or be enough. Empty one, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. 
Uh, Pithy Needle does not stop Flashback. All right, we'll give this a shot. Two Tron pieces. A Crucible to play around land destruction. No real interaction, though. But pass the turn. Maybe it's just a really... The Glittering Wish part is what's throwing me off. They're playing main deck Glittering Wishes, too. All right, play Tower. Play Mind Stone. Play Relic. And pass the turn. Well, we have a good setup to not die to our opponent's stuff too easily. Yeah, you can't Pithy Needle Flashback. That's not an activated ability. So, start the Exiling. Hopefully, we hit a land next turn. Blooming Marsh for our opponent. Do you think Blue Black Pirates will be like standard fairies? I think it can be a pretty good deck. Yeah. It I can I don't know if it'll be as good as fairies, but I can definitely see that comparison. Ooh. Alright, so let's sacrifice our chromatic star. Add red, draw a card. Faithless looting. Ugh. Huh. Discard Bane Fire. Discard Anger of the Gods? Well, maybe we just discard Goggles. I think. Yeah, discard Goggles. Play Mind Stone. Whiffing on Lands there was pretty bad. Well, if we draw Tron Peas, we just get to Karn, which would be awesome. We can also potentially reanimate Goggles if we really need to, if we draw a Trash for Treasure. I have not started brewing, brewing Blood Moon Depths. It's only legal and legacy. It is interesting, though. It's, it's cool that that combo actually works. Oh, negates the Mind Stone. Okay. Well, I guess they really want to keep us off mana. Pass the turn. I guess that makes sense, considering we're missing land drops. And our opponent has seven cards in hand still. But that's a negate that they don't have for this card when we sooner or later draw a Tron piece. P is eggs. Interesting. Opponent has another land. Ooh, Disciple of the Vault action. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. I tried to build a deck somewhat similar to that at one point. Uh, you could also use Atog as for redundancy with Ravenous Intruder. It's basically the same card. Come on, land! Land, 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 please. All right, well, it is a land. So play mine... Um, yeah, let's play Crucible. Doesn't do anything, but it does give us protection from a future Fulminator Mage. Oh, man, it's it's confusing, but basically they changed they changed the rules. So with Blood Moon now, the lands wouldn't enter with counters essentially they enter as mountains when before like if you played a shock land it would be a mountain but it would still give you this pay to life or its tap thing so basically if you had a blood moon out dark depths will enter with zero counters and then if you get rid of the blood moon you'll have a dark depths with zero counters get a 20 20 etc 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 Untap Breeding Pool for our opponent. Sylvan, carry added. I would like to sack this Relic, but I don't think we can. Well, 
play Mountain, play Faithless Looting. Come on, deck. Give us some uh, tower. Discard Anger. Discard Tower. Play Expedition Map. All right. So we're setting up for Tron next turn, ideally. Assuming our opponent can't counter our Karn or anything. Or blow up our pieces. Ooh, let me see Oversized Shady. <laughs> Glycerin Elf's... <laughs> oh, it's like Boggle Infect Tron. That's interesting. Well... Exile the negate. We're doing this the super hard way. Hopefully our opponent can't just start hard casting huge things. That would be bad. Um, I don't know if Magic Online... I don't know if they have the ability to put it on Mac, unfortunately. So... I think Magic Arena will probably be on Mac eventually, but I'm not super hopeful that Magic Online will ever be on Mac. Well, there goes our Karn. Opponent passes. Play the tower. And I guess we just pass for now. We could have looted and just automatically discarded the cards, but that seems like a bad plan. Pass the turn. Next turn, we can loot and discard lands and get them back with our chalice. Relic pretty much has us covered for gifts. There's gifts. So let's see, maybe our opponent just has to value gifts here. Uh, I mean, we can sack Mindstone at some point. It also gives us enough mana to just cast some stuff naturally. Is it true that some cards from Amaket and Hour of Devastation will be dinosaurs after Ixalan drops? I don't believe any standard cards are changing to dinosaurs. But there are some old cards that are being added to dinosaurs, like Death Miss Raptor, Fungusaur... Things like that. There was like a list of maybe 15 cards, I think. But I don't believe any of them were currently in standard. I could be missing one or could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they were all non-standard cards. Are there any modern decks that would have above 50% win rate in Vintage? Oh, boy. Uh, seems unlikely. I can't think of one that would. I mean, there's modern decks like Storm is a really good vintage deck, but you're playing a lot of vintage cards. So I don't think you could just play modern Storm or something in vintage and have it work. I would be surprised if you could even play like Tron or something and have it work. So I doubt it. Seize Rhino, Thray Tusk, Abrupt Decay, Glittering Rush. All right. We're going to mill mill, let our opponent have Siege Rhino and Thrag Tusk, and trust that we can find ways to deal with those. They are big and scary, but we have things that are even bigger and scarier if we can put together Tron and find them. Like Worm Coils and so forth, and Emrakuls. And hopefully this Faithless Looting will help us get there. Also means our opponent's going to be tapping out. What one do they go with? Alright, they go with Thrag Tusk. It is big, it's a fast clock. Opponent's passing. Hmm, do we crack our Mind Stone? Seven mana, if we draw a Karn, I guess we only have one Karn. Oh, uh, do we crack, do we crack? That's the question. <laughs> Tron Moon? That is quite the combination. Jeff Hoogland can apparently play Tron in any format and have success with it. 
He's a, he's a true believer in the Tronage. All right, we'll crack it. There's a Worm Coil and an Emrakul. Can't cast either. So let's Faithless Looting. Please, lands. No lands. All right, let's think about this. That went as bad as it could possibly go. So discard worm coil. Discard. Uh. The problem with trash is it gets negated, which is really bad. <sighs> All right. Play solemn. Man, <laughs> we might have actually made things way worse by cracking that Mind Stone with how that played out. Without hitting a land or anything, we could have just hard cast a Worm Coil, which would have been nice. So grab a mountain, pass the turn. Jeez, I really want to hit a land there. Opponent plays a land. Now they can leave up a negate, potentially. To go with playing a Siege Rhino, which is a super fast clock. Yeah, we got our Relic. We can activate it at some point. Well, tapping four, which leaves up two for negate. Yeah, I mean, it was. I think it was still the right call. We don't want to get locked into hindsight bias. In hindsight, I kind of wish we hadn't cracked it, but I think it was the right play. I mean, we were drawing a ton of cards, and to hit no lands in four or five cards, six cards, is actually just kind of unfortunate. Gideon deck looks fun. Oh, man. Well, that went... Yup. So, we definitely chose all the wrong options for the last two turns. We kept a trash for treasure, and we didn't get negated, but we knew that spells matter stuff would be able to hose it, and we got collected brutality. We will draw a card. It's a useless mountain. Opponent gets in with Thrag Tusk. Well, we need to draw something sooner. We're just absolutely dead. I don't think we can crack Relic, or else we risk just losing to another Gifts. Here comes Siege Rhino, and now we're on a super fast clock, and we have not much happening. So hopefully we run well. There's Rhino. So what would be good? What do we want to hit? We're down to 12, so exile a card with Relic. Come on, good draws. Another mine. So this means we need to Faithless Looting. There's all the lands that we didn't hit last time. Huh. This is just not working out on any level. I think we really messed up those lines. I think we we should have played differently. So what can we even do here? Discard two lands. Get back mountain crack relic? Ugh. Or maybe we just got to crack Relic naturally in case we draw our Tron piece. No, we got four power plants in our deck. We just haven't uh, found them. So discard the lands. I think we got to just crack Relic. Uh, 
Mm, yeah. And it looks like that's game, unfortunately. Yikes. This is game... The last game. Game two, I think. And I think other than top decking Ugin and having our opponent somehow let it resolve, we're just dead. And then we're still dead to a... Yep, and that does it. Yikes! Oh my goodness. Well, I feel like we probably could have won that, but we... I mean, we did get a bit unlucky. We went through half of our deck without finding our missing Tron piece. And do we also not get an Expedition map? Yeah, I guess we had one earlier. So we basically had seven power plants in our deck, and we just we didn't find them for some reason. I also think that we should have discarded differently. I think we took too risky of a line. Like, it seemed like a good idea to to try to rely on trash for treasure since it's cheaper, but it is a lot more fragile than just keeping worm coil. So I think if we had just kept worm coil and discarded trash for treasure, that that might have changed how that game played out. I mean, we don't know. Our opponent could still have path in hand or something, but I think that we should have taken the more resilient line there, especially since being three mana doesn't really help us anyway. All right. So I think that uh, that does it. All right, quick 30-second break. We'll be right back with round number three. And we're back. Hey, have a good night, uh, Defra. Thanks for hanging out. All right, on to round number three. All right, Tron. We got to have the, the Tron luck that our opponents always have. Maybe I'm just not a lucky enough Tron player. <laughs> Honor Trev, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Uh, if you ever want to see the deck list, if you just do exclamation point deck it will pop up so this hand actually seems pretty reasonable we have a tron piece we have card filtering we got a map to find another tron piece i think this looks all right we can try this so let's just tower and expedition map and pass the turn From 5950214, another $5 donation. Lost to Rhino three times like we lost to Cub when playing Wizards in Standard. And when is the new Blood Moon ruling taking effect? Um, oops, let me read the rest of it. When is the new Blood Moon really taking effect? So Shocklands don't need to pay two life and enter untapped. Uh, so I believe this rule change, at least in paper... Hey, welcome tomatoes i believe the rule change at least as far as paper is concerned will come out alongside ixalan so that's i believe is the time frame uh let's just play grove and pass and tutor up a tron piece um it might come out earlier on magic online i know the planeswalker rule is going on the 20th so it might be the 20th on magic online but it should start alongside the release of ixalan and that is correct as far as how it will work so you will huh okay you will uh be able to play your fetch lands untapped for free we'll grab a tower power plant i guess we just grab mine <laughs> decision poor um yeah let's tormenting voice i think discard spine yeah all right 
We found Tron pieces. So we do have Tron for next turn. We don't really have a payoff yet. Why don't you just start with all three Tom pieces in your opening hand? I know, I'm doing it so wrong. Come on, no Arbiter. No Arbiter Ghost Quarter. That's the one thing I don't want to see. Opponent. We do have Turn 4 Tron, though, which is pretty good. Uh, Daring Saboteur is expensive to activate, so I, uh, I think it could be okay in Pirates or specific builds. But three to activate to make it unblockable is a bit much. Uh, there's no Ghost Quarter. Come on, tell me you don't. Tell me you don't. Tell me you don't have it. Oh, oh my god. Oh, and they correctly choose the Tron piece that we don't have. Uh, well, oh my goodness. Well, Pyroclasm you, you jerk. Ugh. Ah, uh, they guessed the right one. It's that we drew three trod pieces, but not another tower. Our life is sad again. No, they, no, they, I don't think they're ghosting. They just pick correctly. But that still worked out. We got to kill things. Opponent plays Displacer. I should have played, ooh, it's a trading post. Hmm. All right, so let's play Power Plant, and I think we just sack an artifact. How do you return, sack a creature, return an artifact? Hmm. Let's just Bane Fire. That gets so, well, it's not doing anything this turn. All right, let's just play Trading Post and pass the turn. We finally got a Trading Post down. Mean Mean Park for the eighth month in a row. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Man, I love Trading Post. Trading Post is such a fun magic card. We need to play Trading Post in more decks because it's, it's like an artifact planeswalker. Sort of. Dark Confidant, that probably needs to die. Ooh. Hmm. Jeez. Goggles, eh? So we can just double Faithless Looting off Goggles? Do we just do that? Is that the thing we should do? That's a lot of drawing and discarding. We can also kill Bob... That probably makes more sense. Play Mine Stone. Kill Bob. Make a goat. Then we can sack the goat to get back. Expedition map. Put together Tron. Bane Fire. I think that's got to be the right choice here. So play Mine Stone. That's got to be the better of the two choices. Play Mine. Bane Fire the Dark Confidant. All right, opponent passes it. Really needs that land. Hey, happy birthday, Polly Ball. And Jakey, Jackie Masamoon. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. And we'll just pass. Opponent doesn't have colorless mana yet, which is good. I think we're okay-ish. Colorless mana, Thought Not Seer, is still the nightmare. Opponent gets in. Yep. Down to 12. No colorless mana. Leonin Arbiter. Okay. And Arbiter. Well. Let's make a goat. Oh boy. Can we do this this turn? One, two, three, four, five, six. The problem is we got to pay four to get rid of the Arbiters. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, map is definitely way expensive now. I mean, we can do it, though. Do we just pass and go on that plan? 
block sack into Ugin. I guess we can also Faithless Looting, just in case we hit it and we still have enough mana. I'm doing well, Kurtash. How are you? A little cheeky for the seventh month in a row. No, in fact. No, in fact. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Also, Lauren Nell, four months in a row. Welcome you as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Big scoops here for both of you. All right, let's looting. Power Plant is not the one we were hoping for. So, discard Goggles. Discard Chromatic Star. Play Power Plant. Pass the turn. I mean, we got a plan. We'll see if it's good enough. Opponent. Goes attacking. Alright, so block with the goat. Sack the goat. Oh, no. Huh. Huh. I didn't think that through. For some reason, I was thinking it was going to go to the battlefield. Oops. Well, that's slightly less than ideal. Yeah, that I guess that would count as a punt. Down to seven. Opponent has tied Hollow Sculler. Yikes. Well, that would have ruined our plan anyway. Takes Ugin. Sack Mindstone. Ah! All the power plants! Okay. So... I guess we just pass the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so play the map. I think this can still work. Skyworthy, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for a new subscriber. Oh, Ablis Cavallara is the artifact planeswalker. You're very right. So play the map. Pass the turn. I think we're still okay. Maybe. Because we can gain four with trading post. Opponent uh, finds temple. Goes attacking. So we need to Lightning Bolt Eldrazi Displacer. Yeah, and we couldn't even take it because of the Displacer. So we're still going to need to draw a Finisher. We're going to have Tron, and we're going to have the ability to draw an extra card with Trading Post. But we are going to need to draw a finisher for us to be able to win the game. We go to one. So we can search out our missing Tron piece. All right. So pay for Arbiter. Pay for Arbiter. I guess that doesn't even work. Oh, man. Yeah, this is just... Everything about this is wrong. I guess we were just dead. <sighs> a goat wouldn't have mattered because our opponent can just blink it with the displacer. We blink the sculler. Our opponent blinks it with the displacer. I think you're misunderstanding how Eldrazi displacer works. Eldrazi dis the only creature we can kill there is Eldrazi displacer. That's the only the only available card. There was a there was a punt very early in the game where we needed to well 
we might have lost because of it, but we should have sacked the goat and played the thing earlier. So that is a thing that should have happened, but we can't kill Displacer there. We didn't have mana to stay alive and tutor, so just a combination of all those things. Uh, I so I did I did punt earlier though because I was for some reason I was thinking that trading post returned the artifact to the battlefield but that was wrong and that was a mistake. All right, so we're playing Eldrazi, blah blah blah, taxes, blah blah blah. Definitely want Crucible of Worlds. Probably want Worm Coil Engine and maybe another Ugin. Stuff that we probably don't want. I don't even know what we go down in this matchup. Yeah, we're bad at putting together Tron. Other people, when they play Tron, they just always have Tron on turn three. Like, Tron is, for me, like Delver, where opponents have it 97% of the time on turn three. Uh, if we bolted during our turn, then... I think we were still, then our opponent could have shambling, fired up shambling vent, attack for lethal. We would have had to discard a card to gain life to stay alive. And then I think we were still dead. I guess we were, we would have been at sack our trading post. Hope we top deck missing Tron land plus, I don't even know if there's a card that does it there. So I think we are basically just dead because we had to pay for double Arbiter in that situation. Oh, man, we're running out of time. Man, very bad at sideboarding quickly on stream. Let's go down one goggles. Three is a bit excessive. And go down... Um... Um... One Banefire and... Maybe a lightning bolt? Try it like that. ST Soupy, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. All right, we get to play first. I don't think we could go chump there because we'd have to pay a life for the goat and then we would have been dead. So I think we had to gain life there. Um, because we're at seven, we'd have to go to six to make a go, and then Arbiter, Arbiter, Shambling Vent would be lethal. So we get to play first. And, okay. I have to say, I have not been very impressed with Trash for Treasure. It feels like, I really like Trash for Treasure as a card, but it feels like we don't have enough stuff to really make it work like we've never really had good situations where we could just do something with it i mean we only need one land and anger of the gods is super good against our opponent's deck Uh, the Groves are just the best untapped dual, uh, dual land, I believe. So, play a Mountain Pestiturn. I mean, it is a red land, but we also have all the mana, the artifacts that make mana. Um, someone. LOL, fail, WTF, BBQ for the 11th month in a row. How do you feel about the changes to the Planeswalker uniqueness rule? Is Zayru Gideon Tribal a thing now? Mono Jace Control, particularly in EDH. Ooh. Well, I thank you for the subscription. I think that the Planeswalker Uniqueness Rule, I haven't really considered it too much for EDH. It seems like it'll be interesting for Modern and probably Standard. I It probably has some impact on EDH, although I think it's less of an impact because you can only play one of each card anyway, which is... I mean, takes away from the power of the entire thing. Play the power plant, pass the turn. I don't think this is that bad of a keep. Anger of the Gods is like one of our best cards in this entire matchup. It's so insanely good. Pona has Arbiter. Yep. Tron Luck? Pyroclasm. 
We'll play the tower, and we are just going to get rid of Arbiter for now. Pass the turn. You can have, yeah, you can definitely have more Jaces on the battlefield, which is cool. But I think you'll see more of an impact when you can have, in other formats, because you're, even though you can have all the Jaces on the battlefield in Commander, you still got, like, what are the odds that you draw all the Jaces? In a 100-card singleton deck. So I think, I mean, I think it'll still have an impact, but... Really? Alright, Shambling Vent. At least it's not a Ghost Quarter. Uncastable Trading Post. Well, I guess we passed the turn. Uh, that deck has a ton of Planeswalkers. Looks really fun for Commander. Hey, what's up, Gut? We're playing some really janky Tron. There's Eldrazi Temple. That's the card that shouldn't be in modern. Yup, that's a good one. Opponent takes our Ugin. We draw more stuff we can't cast. Well, that's pretty unfortunate. I swear to God, every time I play against Tron, my opponent has turn three Tron. Seriously, it's like 100% of the time. Oh, opponents. Our opponent's got the nuts. Hey, see you, Zara. Take something. Yeah, I think it was just game. Opponent. Plenty of taken. Take Zalem. And we draw nothing relevant, and I believe that just does it. <laughs> More chromatic stars. Hey, there it is. Well, that's the game. I believe. Yeah, we're literally dead. <laughs> well, maybe you're just supposed... To, I don't... <laughs> I don't know. I... I guess we'll see. I mean, maybe we shouldn't have kept that hand. I don't know. Anger is anger is so good against their deck. It's it seems like a very a very tempting card to keep. But it could be wrong. I can't imagine, I mean, I guess Tron mulligans well if you're lucky, but I can't imagine that Tron's a deck that, well, I don't know. Well, we'll see. I mean, we'll look at the starting hand, and I guess if you don't have Tron in your opening hand, you just mulligan until you do, and that's how you play Tron. That doesn't sound like a practical magic game plan, though. I can't imagine that that's how you're supposed to play Tron. It seems like most of the Tron people I play against just... So, like, from what you're saying, you just snap mole this hand because you don't have enough Tron pieces. And But what are the odds that you have multiple different Tron pieces in your six-card hand? Like, that doesn't seem like... Huh. So you just... Uh... <laughs> uh, Midnight Gaming, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. All right, so our new hand is one Tron piece, more eight drops, and etc. So we just keep mulliganing and hope we get more Tron pieces and stuff. We just go to five and then four. I can't imagine that that is 
I can't imagine that this is how this works. I mean, I'll do it because that's what everyone's saying to do. All right, now we have no Tron pieces, eight drops, and Worm Coil Engine. Uh, so I guess we just keep going and trust that the four card hand is where it is. All right, we we did it. We got a Tron piece and a map. Unfortunately, even if we put together Tron, we have Pyroclasm and Anger of the Gods. The Eraticone, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Biggs gives cheer for our new subscriber. All right, well, we put the theory to the test at least. We put the we put the theory to the test. <laughs> no, but just mulligan until you have the have trod in hand theory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we could technically have it. <laughs> we could technically have it on three. Oh, uh, everyone said Mo. You did. Oh, maybe the stream delay did it. I thought everyone was saying Mo to the six because uh, maybe it was the stream delay. Well, we are going to put together Tron if we draw land because we have double map. I think it must be the stream delay that was uh, the problem there. Because I, I thought I, you said Mo on the seven and then Mo again on the six. Ah, uh, it's, it's Twitch's fault. We're blaming Twitch. All right, Solemn, go. I think, I think it's actually an interesting question because I think part of it might also be this build of Tron. Because if you look at uh, the more traditional Tron decks, like green, black, and green, white, they also have ancient stirrings. So they kind of have eight expedition maps they also have double the number of eggs, so they're playing um, the full eight chromatic spheres and chromatic stars when we're playing um, only only four of them. So I think that so I think that maybe green, black, and green, white Tron have the ability to mulligan more aggressively for Tron than th this deck does because I don't think our odds of putting together. Um, they also have Sylvan Scrying, so they have 12 copies of Expedition Map, essentially. So I think that maybe this deck doesn't um, doesn't do it the same way that Green, Black, or some of the other Tron decks would. All right, so we do get to start searching up lands here. I'm afraid we're going to get hit by Through the Breach, though, unfortunately. <laughs> I got a feeling someone's donating to say, play Chromatic Star. <laughs> Vomit, what do they got? 595, 04213 with the 595. This is why I Tron because when my opponents and pro players are in a tournament, they play Tron, they always have it. When I play it, I always suck. Yeah, that I'm coming around to that. That maybe, uh, that maybe, I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely open to the fact that I could be playing it wrong. I'm definitely not a Tron player. And I definitely don't mulligan aggressively enough anyway. So I think that there's definitely a possibility that I should be mulliganing more aggressively. Definitely open to that being a thing. But I'm also not 100% sure that this build of Tron can mulligan that much. Gee. <laughs> Our opponents are demanding their own lightning bolts. They must be a breach deck. They must be just trying to throw the breach us and they need a land to breach Emrakul and we lose. There's a peek. Gets a look at our hand. And. Yeah, I mean, we definitely aren't going to put together Tron as consistently without Sylvan Scrying. That's definitely true. Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the Through the Breach deck. Four Serum Visions, which means I'm pretty sure they just are looking for one land and they're going to beat us. Yeah, it probably has Blood Moons as well. Blood Moon, Through the Breach, etc. Uh, I probably should have played the star. In all, in all honesty. Alright, we'll get a tower. I think probably the biggest reason, well... 
I was rambling on about Tron Mulligans. It, oh, not again! We're so good at doing that. Um, now we'll play the star. Alright, star down. Pass the turn. I'm pretty sure we get breached. Our opponent's got to find a land at some point. Well, not yet. Okay. So I guess we're going to get to put together Tron somehow. What is... Or unless we get Blood Mooned, I guess. Is our opponent just one land short of killing us and they can't find that one land? Kind of feels like that's what's happening. Alright, so crack map. Yeah, we're good at drawing the Tron piece that we search for. So get our Urza's mine. Tron assembled. So maybe the mulligan plan is working. We do have Tron now. And we didn't have Tron in our previous games. Oh, there's a through the breach. Well, oh, they have so many counters. Play mine. Um, I guess we sack the star. Just to see if we hit something good, maybe. Lightning bolt. Well, play goggles. Expecting this to get countered. Yep, here comes Snapcaster for remand. Not sure how this match actually goes for us. It probably does not go good. Yeah, I think we're getting there, Jay Zoller. This has been our most, our quickest assembly of Tron, I think, on the Moldefor. So I think next game, I just don't even look at our hand. <laughs> I, we just don't look, and we just Moldefor and trust. Uh, we killed someone with goggles at the beginning of the stream. And it was super awesome. Our first match was super awesome. Then last match, the last two matches, I guess, were less awesome. Here comes Snapcasters. Well, I guess we might as well start bolting things. We're not going to beat the Breach when it happens anyway. So we have to... I, what do we have? Spine, I think. Spine kill a land gives us some weird slight chance. Is our opponent tapping out? What's happening? Ah, so cl oh, uh, Blood Moon. Okay, back to that. So play Tower. Play Solemn. We just we never be Emrakul when they get to it. Tutor out a land, and they're gonna draw a land. They gotta draw a land. Pass the turn. Bolts the Solemn. All right, well, Faith is looting. I don't know. Ugh. All the stars. Well, discard Anger, discard Pyroclasm. Pass the turn. Uh, why wouldn't we bolt Snapcaster during combat? Doesn't it make sense to kill it when we would not take damage? There's the Breach. All right. Now with less mulliganing. Blood Moon does help us cast Anger. Uh, okay, so against this deck, what do we... Hmm. It seems like a good Emrakul deck, because it'll help us get through the counters. We don't really have a good way of dealing with the counters. Uh, I guess Karn attacking our opponent's land is kind of a plan. Relics seem relatively interesting. Unfortunately, uh, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. From Mirkin, $2.95. Don't maul, don't play star, keep everything in hand. One more time for Momir. More time for Momir. Well, thank you for the donation, Mirkin. And we probably will have time for Momir tonight. Hopefully. We'll see. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> There's 
no way our opponent didn't have it there. <laughs> that whole game, they, they had us dead for like 10 turns. They just couldn't find their land. That, so there's no, there's no way they were troll, troll breaching us there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess we could have seen it. That probably makes sense. It, it doesn't take long to see it happen, but there's no way they didn't have it. Uh, so graveyard hate, land, ways to attack lands. Ugin's probably not even that good in this matchup, in all honesty. I guess we could try to bring in the back to natures, but I don't know. Staff also doesn't seem to really do much in this matchup. We could bring it back to natures for Blood Moon. That's the only thing they're hitting? I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's worth it or not. Are we going to get standard cats before Ixalan? Uh, probably not. I don't think we're going to have standard budget magic before Ixalan. I think at this point we'll probably just wait for the new format to come out, most likely. Um, alright, let's try it like that. I don't think Needle does anything, right? Needle doesn't stop Breach or Blood Moon or Emrakul, so I don't think so? Alright, so... <sighs> we have a Tron piece. We have redraws. But... Huh. Yeah, I guess we got a mulligan. So, like, I think this hand we just have to keep with this deck. I don't think we can we can be greedier than that. We can keep a Tron piece on top. We have Faithless Looting to do some filtering. And I think we actually are just going to fire off Faithless Looting. Don't mind discarding Banefire here. And also, I guess Mountain? Well, actually Lightning Bolt. We Lightning Bolt doesn't do much here. Pass the turn. Yeah, we have green mana in Grove of the Burn Willows for Back to Nature. So we do have a little bit of green mana. Ooh. All right. So play Power Plant. Play Expedition Map. So we're getting kind of sort of close to Tron. Uh, I mean... I don't know what cards in our deck help us stay alive against what our opponent's doing, in all honesty. Like, we don't really, we just don't really have an answer. I guess we have a Karn and a Spine are our two, like, pseudo answers to something like that. But we don't really have a, a real answer. So pass the turn. Looking to buy some Swan deck. Any upgrades? Um, Swans kind of is what it is for the most part. Ooh, opponent's going bolt the face. Okay. I mean, yeah, I guess we can... I guess we can leave the Chromatic Star. We'll see. We're definitely cracking our map this turn. Grab a tower. Play a tower. I mean, we're going to run out trading post. I wouldn't be surprised if it was countered. Yeah, it looks like it's getting remanded. There's a remand. Pass the turn. Janky fun. Four color evolution flicker. Ooh, that does sound super janky and fun. There's the blood moon. All right, that slows us down. If they also have Emrakul and Breach, that's super sad. That deck looks really fun. Eldritch Evolution, Ghostly Flicker, lots of sweet Blink targets. I love decks like that. Blink decks are super fun to play. Oh, Trash for Treasure actually would have been good here, but it's actually not. So play Trading Post. Play Mountain. If we hadn't been Blood Moon, we could have Trash for Treasure back the Expedition map, which would have actually been pretty sweet. Hey, see you, Tomatoes. Be back on Thursday for another one. Bona has a steam vents. Uh, there's a breach. There's an emerald. Well, I guess we can make a goat. 
I think we're still super dead, though. One, two, three, four, five, six. We dropped a one. I mean, in theory, we survived this hit for the time being. We can't play anything, but we did survive it. I'm working on a worm token deck for modern. Uh, sure. Send me a link. Uh, all right. Pass the turn. Yeah, we can send a message. They're going to find a snapcaster or a bolt. Well, I guess their bolt got shuffled in from the graveyard, but... We probably should save the bolt to kill a Snapcaster, actually. Although, I can't imagine that there's a way we draw out of this. We need Tronland, Chromatic Star, back to nature. And, I don't even know. Uh, probably, like, the 8 Whack Goblins deck might be the, I think, might be the most competitive of the modern ones. The Favorable Winds deck was pretty strong, too. But I think that's the... I think that's the best one. There's a Snapcaster. Four Serum Visions, probably? Yep. Well, I mean, Bolt Snapcaster. It could happen. We could... And even if we draw those, we'd still need to draw a Finisher. And I don't know what that would be. If you would lose to an approach trigger with Exquisite Archangel on the field, does it counter the approach trigger? Uh, I believe it should. I think that it says if you would lose the game, right? Oh, boy. Well, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Play Chromatic Star. Pass the dirt. Mono Green Stompy can be pretty good. I think that Goblins is mostly faster than Mono Green Stompy with more reach, but Mono Green Stompy is a good budget option, too. And there's the bolt. All right. Well, one more round, but the kids aren't eating tonight. But we got one more round to actually do something sweet with this deck. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's a reason why Tron decks for the history of modern have played Karn on turn, <laughs> on turn three instead of uh, <laughs> instead of trying to bane fire people but it's a cool i mean it does cool stuff and it um it, it could do some cool fun stuff but as far as level of competition uh i don't think there's any way that it's i don't think there's any way that it uh is is competitive as the more traditional ones Incendiary Command, there are some cool things you can do with uh, with goggles, that's for sure. Uh, Hydra Scales. I think when I had tweeted that, nothing like that had happened. I was kind of live tweeting during the arena event, and Ga uh, Gabby did unsummon something eventually, but I think that at the time that, that, that I had tweeted that, I was kind of just like writing stuff out, so... Do you think it's better than Budget Bluetron? I don't know. Budget Bluetron is sweet. This deck is not... Is I don't know. I guess this is somewhat budget compared to Tron, but this isn't a real budget budget deck. So we get to play first. Come on, deck. One time. Do something sweet. Oh, man. Maybe this deck is just really bad. Uh... So, like, a hand like this, this looks like a normal hand of cards that we would expect to draw from our deck. Like, Goggles is a three of, this is a three of, this is a four of, this is a three of, random lands. So, this seems like a typical hand, but I don't know how this hand ever beats anything. Like, how do you ever win with this hand? But if, but if you can't keep these kind of hands, like, maybe our deck just isn't built correctly because these are like our four of so we're those are the cards we're gonna like expect to get often 
So I guess this hand we keep and hope we scry into a land, although we don't really have a payoff here. Yeah, I think that might be the problem, Emeril, uh, Rolf, Emeril Rolf. I think it's like, it has a lot of cool things going, but the things only like kind of sort of loosely synergize with each other. Soft Hackle, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. So I think that's a bigger problem. Like all the plans, we have like just bits and pieces that kind of work together. So I think that a more focused, ooh, well, we are going to be able to assemble Tron. We are going to need to find something to do with Tron. But that is, I mean, we have the hard part for us, which is Tron. Yeah, I think we're just hoping we draw into payoffs. Although, yeah, I think that's the main hope. Yeah, Goggles sounds really fun. I'm, oh dear. Is this affinity? It's affinity. Well, come on, anger of the god super quick, like. Play tower, pass the turn. So we can get another Tron piece. Yeah, I mean, I think that's true. I'm glad we played this deck. I just, I don't know if I could in good conscience recommend playing this deck at a tournament or anything, but I think it's a a fun deck and it does a lot of cool things and I like a lot of the cards in it. But I wish it was a little more focused. I think you could still be, I think you can still be Redtron and also still be focused. I think that's, I think that's a thing that can happen. You can be both. Ah, oh, Sean McLaren, thanks for the host. If you have a suggestion for commander class, uh, yeah, you can. I think uh, you can send it here or you can email me, saffronolive at goldfish.com. Also, tweet him at budget commander. That also works. Uh, Master of Ethereum. That's a fast clock. Power plant A. Uh, I think we're just dead here, unfortunately. Pass the turn. Uh, the deck is one in one in th one in three right now, and about to lose this game. Eh, I'll just play non-tron decks, I think, will be my main choice. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, but I don't think there's a draw that changes this. I think is the is the problem. Like, we might go to 1 here, but there's nothing we can draw that changes it. And Galvanic Blast, alright. Well, we get to bring in more Angers of the God and more sideboard cards. Uh, so we get three Ancient Grudges, which are good. I guess we don't actually have more Angers of the God. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we get Ancient Grudges. Those are our big sideboard cards. Go down Ugin, which is pretty mediocre against a bunch of colorless creatures. What is it with people with Needle? We have a Needle in the sideboard. So what are we what are we going down? Um, we got to cut two things, maybe pyromancer's goggles and a bane fire. Or, oh man, this deck. I mean, uh, like cutting those makes sense, but then <laughs> this deck is so funny. So it makes sense that bane fire and three goggles probably aren't ideal. But when you think about taking those cards out, what are we drawing into? Two, we're trying to assemble Tron for two worm coils, one spine, and 
a staff. So I feel like we like have to keep those cards in because otherwise we're doing a ton of work to try to assemble Tron. And our payoff is Worm Coil, which means we could have just like played a Grand Architect or something and, <laughs> and cast a Worm Coil. Uh, maybe we go down Trash for Treasure a couple or just let's maybe like this. Yeah, Oblivion Stone would be good. I don't think we're going to bring in Needle. Let's try it. Let's try it like this. Oblivion Stone could be good. That's for sure. That's another... Well, <laughs> I guess we'll keep up our mul uh, mulliganing trend. Well, we're not going to assemble Tron very swiftly, but Pyroclasm and Anger are good against Affinity. So... So that might give us a chance in this match. So we'll keep this. Hey, welcome, uh, Jay Mules. Good to have you. I like Needle, but I think you need to be boarding a Needle for a specific target. I don't think you just want to bring it in for general value. Opponent has Ink Moth and Springleaf Drum. And Mem Knight. And, well, I feel like we actually have a pretty good shot just thanks to our two sweepers. Should go a long ways. So play the Mountain, Pyroclasm, away the creatures and our opponent's mana. Please play... Rite of Passage, ooh. Oh yeah, that combo sounds super interesting. It's a super fun idea. Could be a good against the odds deck. Pyrohemia, Rite of Passage, then Rage Dinosaurs. Uh, where's the one that makes them? Oh, you can get lands with Raging Raptors. Yeah, it seems like a a super fun idea. We will potentially have to try it at some point. There's Power Plant. Well, let's Power Plant and just Anger again. Pass the turn. Keep the board clear. We've got two two for ones. Yeah, I think that's the plan, Jay Zoller. <laughs> See you, Chimney Joe. The, the one and only time. Then people can stop asking me. So I just got to play Infect and go like 05. And then and then we can put that one to rest too. Ooh. Well, we can set up Tron. So play Tower. Play Chromatic Star. Pass the turn. We have to not die to Ink Moth Nexus. I've never seen a, a bigger group of Pithing Needle fans. Here's Ink Moth. Pumps the dorks. Equips. So that's a lot of infect. Gonna have to find a way to deal with that. So let's get Tron. Tower, power plant, grab the mine. Tormenting voice. So play the mine. And I guess we crack star. Well, I guess we can use colored mana, or colorless mana. Draw a card. What do we find? Mr. Nubbles. Oh yeah, the the Gideon deck looks very flavorfully Gideon. 
It, it looks pretty interesting. Pretty aggressive. Another Tron piece. So let's Tormenting Voice. Discard the Tron piece. More lands. Faithless Looting. <laughs> and discard, discard. I think we're just dead now. Well, nice to know ya, Mono Red Tron. And yeah, that does it. We found the bolt, but we can't cast the bolt. And yeah. That's the game, that's the league, so, wow, Monoredtron. So, Monoredtron didn't go super well. We ended up going one in four. Our very first round was super sweet, and we actually did pretty well. I'm sure that there were punts. I don't know if there were any punts that actually cost us matches, so I'm sure there were punts along the way, uh, but... I don't know. I'm not convinced that this deck is actually very good. I think that, uh... I think that this deck is... Actually, it's just... It's it's very scattered and unfocused. So, I like the idea of different builds of Tron for fun. Obviously, if your goal is to win a GP or a Magic Online League... Uh, it's very unlikely that a alternate build of Tron is going to be better than the tried and tested builds. But if you're playing for fun, I think an idea like this is cool. I'm not sure what the what the fix is for this deck, though. Uh, we have lots of cool things. Staff of Nins, the Pyromancer's Goggles. The biggest problem we ran into is everything just felt so scattered. It's like we have a few different decks put together. Like, we have this... Trash for Treasure, Faithless Looting, Tormenting Voice deck, which is like a seven card, a seven card package. So that's like one deck. And then we also have Pyromancer's Goggles with Banefire deck. And that's kind of like another deck. The problem is those two different decks don't really synergize like very loosely i mean i guess we can trash for treasure back at goggles or faithless looting to find a main fire but there's not really any direct synergy between those two packages so we are often left with uh, you know drawing trash for treasures never faithless looting and having trash for treasure do nothing or having the pyromancer's goggles or even drawing multiple pyromancer's goggles and not having a bane fire to do anything with. So I feel like the biggest thing with this build of the deck that could potentially be like a fun casual build of Tron is it just needs to be more focused. I feel like it needs to be honed in on one plan or another. Also, from a slightly more competitive uh, standpoint, and maybe it's just a budget choice, although the fact that we have Karn in the sideboard kind of works against that theory, but it's really hard for me to imagine that if you're a Tron deck, you don't want Karn. It's like Wizards made Tron and Karn to go together. The seven mana is just so perfect, so it's hard to imagine that you don't want Tron, even if you're playing it, or don't want Karn, even if you're playing a weird version of Tron. So, hey, if you want to see the sweetness of the deck, go back and watch the first round, which was super sweet. I think we'll probably explore Trash for Treasure in the future, and it's not impossible that we play another weird build of Tron. I really enjoyed the Trading Post Tron deck when we did it a long time ago, but I think this build needs some touching up and some work to really be ready to... To really be ready to go. Good news is, since our league went so horribly, <laughs> and it's already over, that means we get to play some Momir tonight. So at the top of the Momir list, actually, we have Mini Cory, followed by Joel, Apes of Wrath, and Mr. t uh, I think Mini Tori is here, though. So Mini Tori, if you want to Momir it up, send me a challenge, and I will pull up the Momir lay, so... Momir Lay incoming. Uh, awesome. All right, why Mini Cory's updating their moto? Quick 30 second break. Last one of the stream. Going well, Weber. Be right back.
getting ready for some moom here. Uh, you're getting close, Joel, I think. Getting there, getting close, so close. Uh... And we might actually get to open some stream, uh, some chests. It seems like we have a, a donation, a donation of treasure chests for the stream. Uh, that's cool from Lulu five one seven. So, as we're waiting for Momir, maybe we'll uh, we'll get something sweet. Well, thank you, Lulu. Hey, see ya, Bogus Banana. Yeah, it was worth a try. We'll be back on Thursday, maybe with something slightly more competitive. Well, thanks to the awesomeness of Lulu, while we're waiting for our Momir match, we have some chests to open, so even despite our poor Mono Red Tron performance, we have... The kids, some food for the kids. Thank you so much, Lulu. All right, well, these ones are from Lulu, so let's give it a shot. Oh, awesome on the Fritz. Thank you so much. So here we go. Three of three, chest to open. Lulu, better known as 5950-2413. One, one of the most common donators to the stream, so thank you so much, 595, a.k.a. Lulu. Probably better known as. Chest number one, we get Haunted Plate Mail. Ah, uh, sweet equipment. Not really valuable, but interesting. It's kind of like ultra budget batter skull. <laughs> if you can't afford your batter skull for your Stoneforge Mystic, kind of does a really janky impression of it. Oh, uh, one second, Mini Cory. You've uh, send me the request again in just a second also veteran motorist and shimmer scale drake all right not much value but two more to go two more chests to go what do we get in the next one galvanoth beginning your upkeep you may look at the top card of your library if it's an instant or sorcerer you can cast it without paying Ooh, sounds like a fun commander card although not super valuable apothecary apothe apothecary geist and comparative analysis. All right, last one. Last chance for a port. Last chance for a Black Lotus. Come on from Lulu. Jor Keaton, the Prevailer. Uh, Boros Commander, if you want to get aggro with artifacts. Leliana's Defeat, good sideboard card. And Protection of the Hekma. This card reminds me. All right, Minigore, you, uh, you can send me the challenge whenever, and I'll accept it. Thank you so much again, 595, for the donation. So seeing the protection of the Hecma, it reminds me, one of the big things that came out from the Magic Arena is they might be changing one of the rules of the games, it sounds like. Lulu was, uh, was his name on Magic Online. So, Burning Sun's Avatar was, uh, what is it, three damage to a creature or player, and, th wait, three damage to a creature, and three, three damage to up to one creature, and three damage to a player. But on Magic Arena, it says three damage to a creature and three damage to a player or planeswalker, I believe. Which would mean protection of the Hecma wouldn't do much protecting. Basically changing the planeswalker redirection rule, apparently. Yeah, we tried some Mono Red Tron. We did not have much success with Mono Red Tron, unfortunately. But I kind of feel better. I felt a little felt a little dirty playing a Tron deck. And now we get to play Momir. <laughs> Mog Maniac. Two mana, one one. When it's dealt damage, deals that much damage to target opponent. Could actually be relevant in the late game. I think the first that it was heard about was from Magic Arena, though, is why the whole conversation came up. Musician, cumulative keep one, put a music counter target creature. It, if it doesn't have at the begin, <laughs> if it doesn't have at the beginning of your upkeep, 
<laughs> Destroy that creature unless you pay one for each music counter on it. It gains that ability. I wonder if you ever run into a situation where you're like, huh, I really want to put a music counter on that, but it already has, at the beginning of your upkeep, destroy this creature unless you pay one for each music counter on it. <laughs> oh, Ice Age problems. Back in the day. <laughs> I think that the rules change makes sense. I like the simplification aspect. Ooh. I don't know if I ever got a turn of witness before. We get back a land that's essentially drawing a card, which is good. The only thing I don't like is it does actually have a fairly meaningful impact on gameplay, which would mean, uh, for example, the big one would be Leyline of Sanctity. Like, right now, if you want to play a kind of prison-y deck in modern, you can play Leyline of Sanctity, and it essentially gives your Planeswalkers... Shr uh, not Shroud, Hexproof, I guess it would be. But uh, it gives your Planeswalkers protection because your opponent can't target them because they can't target you. So it would definitely power down cards like Leyline of Sanctity and protection of the Hecma and Standard. It'll be interesting if they do go with that rule change, which I don't think it's set in stone yet, but it sounds like they're going to, if they would errata stuff like Leyline. To say you and Planeswalkers you control have Hexproof, for example. Or Hecma to say... Because right now, that's like when they created Leyline, that's obviously what it was designed to do. So, I mean, I don't know if they would do that, but it's possible that they would. I guess we just let Mog Maniac die. I don't think we're going to pay one for its music counter. Uh, you have to redirect to a single Planeswalker. So the damage that would hit the player can be redirected to one Planeswalker. And that's opposed to, like, you see, Hour of Devastation says all Planeswalkers. But Earthquake can only kill one. Yeah, it would just be for simplicity. And from that perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Because it is confusing to new players that you would have to... If you want to lightning bolt a planeswalker, you would have to lightning bolt your opponent and redirect it. It is a seemingly unnecessary unnecessary extra step. So I think in that sense it makes uh it's probably a good change. Kind of like the same reason, ooh, what does this do? When it enters the battlefield, it becomes your choice of a 3/3, three, three, a 2/2 two, two with flying. Oh, well, I think 2/2 two, two with flying is certainly the right option here. Or a 1-6 with Defender, which does not sound very appealing. Windrake, not bad. If I played Competitive Modern, what deck would I use? So if my only concern was winning a tournament, I think me personally, I would play the Vengevine deck. Although that's it, partly because I played so many games with that deck and I'm really comfortable with it and feel like I play it pretty proficiently. But... Other options, uh, I think, would be like Storm would be a deck I would be interested in, but I would want to practice it a lot first to feel proficient. Also, Death Shadow decks, those are the two that really stick out. And Legitimate Tron decks, like the Tier Tron decks, those are kind of the decks that stick out to me as being the top tier if I was going to choose one. Ooh, Garrick's Pack Leader is actually pretty sweet. This is just going to draw us an extra card essentially every creature for the rest of the game uh i like that that might mean we actually get to emerical pass the turn i like free win red but i and i still think that it's competitive but i would want to do some testing with it in the current meta before i was ready to take it to a gp but i think that free win red is definitely uh, still something that I would consider playing at that level, but I just haven't played that many games with it recently, so I feel like I would want to touch it up against the current meta. Specifically Storm. Uh, I would want to have a, a better plan for Storm. Because Storm is like the number one deck in the meta right now, according to just the numbers. And they don't really care about Blood Moon, they don't really care about Ensnaring Bridge, so we'd be leaning super hard on Chalice, which isn't necessarily game over. I've definitely chaliced on one against Storm before, and they're still able to win. Well, we draw a card. Sphinx of Chimes. 
Uh, non-land cards means it doesn't do much. Another big flyer, though. Yeah, I mean, Jund is fine. There's there's a ton of fi fine choices. Modern has definitely gotten to the point where it is um, similar to Legacy in the sense that it really does reward you knowing the deck. That's why, oh, Shieldred is going to eat away our board pretty quickly. Um, it definitely rewards you for knowing your deck and being good with your deck. You see people who play the same deck over and over again and put up good performances with it. I mean, Jeff Hoogland is a great example of this. Like, Jeff Hoogland is probably the only person that ever wins with Kiki Cord, or he was for a long time. He was, like, the only person playing Kiki Cord. But Jeff could take it to a tournament in top eight with it. And it really does, the format really does reward you knowing your deck. You also see that with Todd Stevens a lot. He'll play decks that no one else is playing, and he just knows and plays them really well, and he can perform well with them. Bronze Horse, as long as another creature, you control another creature, prevent all damage, so it would be out to Bronze Horse by spells that target it. Okay, not super helpful. We're basically just in a race, because we can't block Shieldred, and it's going to keep eating our creatures. So all the extra cards we're drawing are not necessarily going to save us. I think that Titan Shift is number two. At least when I looked yesterday, it was Storm 1 and um, Scape Shift number two. Or Titan Shift. And Titan Shift is probably a fine choice. I've just never played Titan Shift. So for some reason, I don't think of it as often as I do the other top tier decks. But it is near the top of the format right now. So I'm sure that's a good choice as well. That's going to make racing a lot more difficult. Opponent gets in, gets in. I played against Hoogland in Modern Event, rallied back for a chance to top eight, then got knocked out of contention against something, someone else on Kiki Gord. <laughs> what are the odds? I thought Jeff was the only one that ever played Kiki Gord. Oh boy. Yeah, we, we, need, we need the bounce cracking. We need the bounce cracking. Kraken or Hoverguard Sweepers or Bust, pretty much. Uh, Tunnel or Worm? <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. I guess we live one more turn, most likely. Yeah, Escape Shift definitely needs to be reprinted. Oh, and the Sphinx. All right, well, now it's definitely Bounce Kraken this turn or we're dead. Opponent gets in. Like, does even playing a Planeswalker open myself to Blightning, even though I have Hexproof now? Uh, n if I'm understanding the question right, the answer would be no. Actually, hmm. Oh, that would have been good if we had more life. I'm not sure why I made a 9 drop there, actually. We should need to make an 8 for Bounce Kraken. Just kind of naturally played the land. I actually don't know how that would work. Huh. That's a super good question. I hadn't thought about Blightning. So, Blightning is 3 damage to a player. And that player discards 2 cards. That's a really good question. If you had a ley line out, if the rule did change, could they just blightening your walker to make you discard through a ley line? That's definitely a possibility. Uh, record was... Let's not talk about record. <laughs> One and four with uh, Trash Tron. Mono Red Trash Tron. Deck is very unfocused, I think. All right, we get to play first here in game three. And we'll keep this. Was surprised that Noble Hierarch and Scape Shift both dodge Iconic Masters reprints. Yeah, Curse of Predation at Rare was a very odd choice. <laughs> not particularly iconic, not particularly a good rare. It was just very weird all around. So I'm um, for our opponent. And passes. Well, play the mountain, and we'll make a two drop here, I think. Uh, it's a grizzly bear, except it's an elf. Pass the turn. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, that would make sense. I just don't know how they... I don't know. There's... A 1-1 one, one unblockable. It just seems weird that you would cast a... Hey, see ya, Notarez. Be back on Thursday. Um, it seems weird that you'd cast a Blightning and not get the discard, but I guess it makes sense that the Planeswalker wouldn't literally discard. Ooh, all right, Smiter's pretty big. Yeah, I mean, they said that that's something that they're thinking about doing, but nothing has been announced officially yet. But it all just kind of came up because of how some of the cards were formatted on arena when we do the liquid metal coating splinter deck for against the odds i think uh notorious all right i, I guess that makes more sense so momir you just need to get the momir avatar which is usually about ten dollars otherwise you just need lands and then you're good to go and lands are basically free if you buy the avatar at the magic online store for 10 bucks you actually get a whole bunch of lands with it uh i think we just block with our double strike knight for now any thoughts on spirits in modern i like spirits in modern Ooh, anafenza eidolon's a nice option against storm being pretty good I think it looks pretty good. When Gauntlanders of Battlefield put a counter on target creature control. Uh, Alright, I guess our elf becomes a 1-1. One, one, which is fine. At least our Manticore can block Corpjack's Menace. I think you there's some avatars that you kind of just get for free, but Momir is not one of them. Other question, does Earthquake get all Planeswalkers under the Spole's rule change, including your own, or does Earthquake suddenly not damage Planeswalkers now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how... There's a lot of questions that come up with stuff like that. Maybe... I don't know. Not sure. It might just be like deals X damage to, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Yearly, Yearl the Miststalker. 5-5 five, five Hexproof. Not going to get any bigger though, since no auras in Momir. All right, let's make a six. <laughs> Crawlworm. Good enough to take down Yuri. Oh, apparently they're going to change the, possibly going to change, should say, the way you interact with Planeswalkers, how you, if you want to Lightning Bolt a Planeswalker, you Lightning Bolt your opponent and then shift the damage to, or redirect the damage to the Planeswalker. Firestorm Phoenix, 6 mana, 3-2, if it would die, return it to its owner's hand. Until that player's next turn, that player plays with that card revealed in their hand and can't play it. Uh... That is some really weird formatting. Okay. So, <laughs> oh yeah, all right. They have to play with the card revealed in their hand. <laughs> Could death attacks be a thing in standard with all the curses and creature hate Ixalan has? Uh, yeah, you probably could play some sort. We played like the mono black curse deck, which isn't really I guess death and taxes in the exact same way as like in modern, but I think you could play something similar. Uh, that's true. I guess Lissids are the exception. Our opponent potentially could get a Lissid on Ural. Opponent. Barricade Breaker. Yeah. Big ol' 
Gets in, gets in. Our opponent has a lot of evasive creatures, which are kind of getting to us. All right, let's make a eight. Prince of Thralls. Well, pass the turn. Going to do a which art is better, which has for the new Iconic Masters coming out. I hadn't thought about that. Possibly. Maybe uh, maybe we will do an art video on it. There is some sweet new art. <laughs> Cardor, not super impressive in Momir. Opponent's getting in. Well, I guess we just trade. All right, let's just make a seven this turn so we can kill this Phoenix. Ooh, uh, and it's a Karthus. Okay. Well, that's a good one. That might actually shift the game back in our favor. Only takes one good hit in Momir. Opponent's down to 12. Man, now we can block Corridor, shoot down the Phoenix, hopefully keep attacking with the dragon and win. All right, there's Tombstalker. What cards do you think will take the biggest price drop because of Iconic Masters? I think the big ones are going to be the modern cards. It's the lower tier modern cards will take the biggest price hit most likely. But I think you can expect most of the modern cards to go down. I don't expect Mana Drain to really go down much at all. I think it's basically a collectible at this point. Do you have any idea how the errata would work? Uh, I don't know. The thing I saw on Twitter was... The only thing I saw was... Ooh. Aaron Forsyth saying... They were not set in stone, but they were thinking that... Lightning Bolt, for example, would say 3 damage to any one target. Which would mean, essentially, Planeswalker, Creature, or... A player... But I don't know how that that wording would work for some things. Like, uh, someone mentioned earthquake. Like, how how would that how would that work? Three damage to each target, but then earthquake would kill all planeswalkers. So I uh, I don't know exactly. Or maybe it's a more limited. Yeah, Flusterstorm is another one where the supply is very small, and that's the biggest reason it's so expensive. So Commander cards are another category where stuff will probably lose a lot. All right, down to seven. I think we just win here, though. All right, we got the win. One more game of Momir. We squeaked it out to game three. Uh, yes, the rule change would certainly get around Leyline. Yeah, I don't, but then, but right now, one way or another, it seems like the cards would have functional changes. Like, Earthquake would not work the way it does now. Because right now, you could kill a Planeswalker with Earthquake. So it's either it can never kill Planeswalkers, or it kills all Planeswalkers. So either way, like, Earthquake would either be worse than it is, or better than it is. But it seems like, with changing the wording, it would be hard to have it play exactly the same as it does now. And maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe playing exactly the same isn't important. So that could be that maybe just whatever. Obviously, it comes up in Commander sometimes with Earthquake, but it's not really a something that's happening in a lot of major formats at the moment. Uh, well, I'm assuming that if it's destroy a planeswalker, it would not say it would not say player. I think it's specifically for damage redirection, so I don't think it would have any impact on non-damage 
spells. And of course, like, we're probably talking about this way prematurely because, like I said, just so everyone is clear on it, they didn't announce that this change is happening. They said, this is something we've been thinking about for a while. This is probably good to happen. And shot out the example of Lightning Bolt saying three damage to any one target as a potential solution to the problem that they would use. So don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves and make it sound like this is happening now. But it is an interesting interesting topic to think about and kind of puzzle over because I hadn't really thought about that. Uh, Volrest Shapeshifter, as long as the top card of your graveyard is a creature, has full text of that card and has two discard a card. Okay, so basically it's a 0-1 that lets our opponent discard a card. That might be the worst 3-drop in all of Momir. At least that doesn't die as soon as it enters the battlefield. If you're the Monarch, well, maybe we'll get a Queen Marchesa and start pumping up our Throne Warden. Alright, we'll just pass. Well, I guess we attack. Might as well. Yeah, destroy target player sounds a bit overpowered. <laughs> Hey, see you, 595. Thank you for all the donations and for the treasure chest. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, that's true. Countryside Crusher does stay on the battlefield and just kills you. All right. Might be the worst three drop that doesn't die immediately, doesn't kill you immediately. <laughs> Aren't there more swamp walk creatures than planes walk creatures? Uh, Forest Walk is one of the worst of them, but yes, there probably are more Swamp Walk creatures than Plains Walk creatures. I would have to check to know for sure. Noggle Bridge Breaker, when there's the battlefield, oh, bounce a land to your hand. That's actually kind of bad in Momir. The thing is that Black also has a lot of the best activated abilities, especially on the higher mana stuff that let you, like, pay a certain amount of mana to kill creatures. So the benefit that you gain by playing swamps is enough to outweigh the risk of getting swamp walked i think although there are we just got shielded in uh the first game and that was pretty good against us still not the monarch passenger what's the planes is it the graceful antelope is that really the only no there's more than that because there's a Oh, what set was it from? There's a 3-mana 2-1 Goblin that has Planeswalk from, like, Planner Chaos or something. It's super bad. I think it also, like, taps and sacks to destroy a white creature or something. Hey, what's up, uh, Jedi Jeff? Oh, we're just uh, wrapping up with some Momir tonight after playing some Mono Red Trash Tron. Pretty horribly in modern. <laughs> oh, man. I just, the highlight, if, they, if we highlight this stream, it's just going to be that first match over and over. Because that match was sweet. And then it was just progressively downhill further and further. Uh, yeah, we'll probably be wrapping up after this game of Momir. Usually we do a league, do a game of Momir, and then uh, usually wrap it up about then. But good news is, be back on Thursday with another one. All right, so question for you who are in the stream. Right now we do 7 o'clock Eastern on Tuesdays and 6 o'clock Eastern on Thursdays. What are your thoughts on just having it be 6 o'clock both days? Like, is... My main worry is people, it makes it better for people in Europe. Probably doesn't really matter much to East Coast people. But 6 o'clock is like 3 o'clock on the West Coast. So I don't know if that would mess up things with West Coast viewers. Yeah, I think it's Graceful Antelope that has Planeswalk. Opponent. Oh, boy. Uh, if our opponent has white mana, this is going to be very devastating. Ether Sworn Adjudicator. Removal is so good in Momir. Yeah, maybe we'll keep it uh maybe we'll keep it the same. 
Just something I've been thinking about. It kind of drives me crazy that it's an hour apart. That's such a like slight difference to have to explain all the time that it it <laughs> how the times are different. I could see if it was like one was at three in the afternoon and the other was at nine at night. Then like all right, but it seems like it uh, unnecessarily confuses people sometimes because they don't remember which days or which time. Shellhide Dragon. Uh, just a 3-3 three, three lifelinker. I don't even think we can attack. I guess we just gotta pass. Uh, we did not finish super well as far as the constructed part of the league. We, uh, we went 1-4. We won our very first match and then just lost, 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 lost. The deck was pretty scattered. Oh, Marionette Master. This is the card I think I'm most excited about playing in Ixalan Standard. I think this card is going to actually be, potentially be legitly good. It seems like such an easy way to kill people with treasures. Like, all you need is five treasures, play Marionette Master, and your opponent just dies. That seems extremely easy to do. So, I would not be surprised if Marionette Master actually could... I mean, it's still six mana, so it's probably not just going to absolutely break the format, but I think it can actually be good. You did not like my Commander Clash submission? Oh, why, Joey Wall? Uh, Neff Moondrakes for the ninth month in a row says, Thanks for all the great content, Seth. Well, thank you so much for the subscription. Big Scoops here for our resubscriber. Well, our opponent's not killing our stuff yet, which is good. <laughs> Rockcaster Platoon. So if we get green mana, we can Pyroclasm Flyers. We'll probably play Panharmonicon again at some point. I just love Panharmonicon too much to not ever play it again. Uh, you can email me, SaffronOlive at mtgofish.com, or just leave your deck list in the comments on YouTube for the Commander Clash. We just did a viewer submitted week. I mean, you're welcome to submit decks whenever, but the normally, for the most part, it's decks that... Uh, that we build i think i mean i can't speak for everyone for me it's mostly decks that i build although sometimes once in a while i play viewer decks even when it's not viewer week but when it's viewer week that's the time when everyone's playing viewer decks thundercloud elemental tap stuff makes everything lose flying all right we get to start making eight drops we're not getting wrecked by adjudicator yet which is good news Excruciator. Not a great 8 drop. Pesiturn. Uh, yes. Not a fan of Tom as a... I like Tom on Commander Clash. He's like the token aggro player. <laughs> Could you see Commander Clash from my point of view? Uh, it's possible that we do that from time to time. We haven't really ever changed that up, but. Quicksilver Behemoth, not the scariest of cards. <laughs> Bounces it back to the hand. I guess it could be sweet in an affinity deck, but geez, it is not good in Momir. Have you ever played the same commander deck for funsies? We've never played the exact same, although we did have a... Um, Feldegriff week, where we all built Feldegriff decks. That was a ridiculous week. We also did Slivers, where we all built Sliver decks. But they were somewhat different builds of the deck. They weren't all exactly the same. So, opponent's going to go attacking. I guess we block and block. Actually, no. I think we got to kill this thing. It feels like that's the most threatening... If our opponent ever gets the mana, that's just going to destroy us. Yeah, four color slivers. I mean, Panor or Philharmonic, Philharmonica, um, Feldegriff. <laughs> One of those PH words. That was fun, but slivers was just absolutely absurd. It was, man, I remember the second game, and it felt like it would never end. It was almost, almost not even fun at some point. Like, 
Everything was just locked up. Everything had every keyword. Everything was 200 power. If you've never seen it, look it up because it is, even if you don't watch the whole thing, because it is pretty long, it is just the, one of the most absurd commander games you'll ever see. It is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had to boot Richard. Oh man, that was a crazy game. Now uh, we get to start scrying. Not super helpful. I guess we could get green mana for platoon, but I don't think we're going to do that. Yeah, that was that was a crazy game. That had to be last season, I think. Season 2. Yes, Bogar Arsenis. That is the card, Jay Zoller. I don't know how you dug that up. And it destroys a planes. That's what it is. Yes, yeah, so you get you can pay three and sack it, I think, to destroy a planes. You and Richard are the best. Timmer is okay when he's not horribly misplaying. Yeah, that doesn't happen often. <laughs> the not horribly misplaying part. Oh, <laughs> uh, let me let me see if I can find the sliver video before this Momir game ends. I'll see if I can find the link for you. I probably was just called Slivers. Let's make an eight. Yes, C Commander Clash. Here it is. Commander Clash. Uh oh, hopefully that works. It says edit, but hopefully it works. Um, if that doesn't work, it's called Commander Clash Sliver Mayhem was the name of the episode. Season 2, episode 30, I think. All right, we get a Death Coil Worm. Yeah, this has ended up being a super long Momir match. It looked like it might be a quick one for a minute, but now it's actually became quite the Momir grind. Yeah, I think that I messed it up because I... I think I copied it wrongly. Let me try one more time. I think I did the edit link. Let's see. That link will hopefully maybe work. Bonus passes. Well, we're going to keep making eight drops until one of us dies. Thank you, Great Germ, for looking that up. What do you think of Tainted Remedy Wall of Shards? Sounds like a really fun against the odds idea. I think I want to brew around Wall of Shards at some point because it seems really fun. I mean, would it be competitive? Competitive? Eh, probably not, but does that matter? No, not really. I think it would be really fun. Ancestors chosen one life for each card in your graveyard. Oh my god. Well, staying long. This one will not end quickly. Uh, well, we were playing Mono Red Tron to begin with. And uh, now we're just wrapping up with a bit of Momir action. The super ultra grindy. Ooh, Crusher. That's a way to crush our way through this board stall, hopefully. Yeah, Sphinx is insane. It is very good. Have any of you played Modern Cube on... Uh, since it came back up, I think it came up last week on Magic Online. Oh my goodness. That is, it's fun. Another, not saying it's not fun, because it is fun, but it is the grindiest cube. Oh my god. At least that was the drafts I've done. It is the mid-rangiest, planeswalkeriest, grindiest cube. <laughs> I have never played a grindier cube than the current version of the, the modern cube. Good. It's like Siege Rhino standard, but that's every single every single deck is <laughs> just Siege Rhino standard. It was still fun. I mean, we have a gonna have a uh, rough drafts coming up for it on Thursday, and then hopefully the oh Casella. That's a good Momir card as well. Does that kill us here? Eh, I don't think it kills us. Actually, it might. Goodness. That is really bad. Halves our damage and doubles our opponent's damage. Jeez, I think that's going to win our opponent the game? Oh, Gisela. Yeah, there isn't a mono... They 
they seriously nerfed mono red for this iteration of the cube because mono red was one of the better decks in previous modern cubes and they really nerfed it hard so i think it's still probably possible to try to be mono red but it is a lot worse than it was before all right so here comes the huge attack now we got to think about how we do these blocks our stuff all deals half the amount of damage their stuff all deals double the damage okay so this doesn't actually kill that oh my god but this has protection from red and green all right so let's see sphinx blocks this thing crusher blocks Ugh, this is not good crusher blocks yikes this thing excruciator so this is gonna deal eight these are gonna deal is this rounded down rounded up so these are gonna deal four each so that kills that this blocks this this blocks this no oh that deals four okay i think we're figuring this out this can block this this blocks th something like oh man i very well might have oh you're right that damage can't be prevented hmm can we kill something else these have first strike that's dying Eh, whatever this is fine hopefully we didn't punt I think this works out somewhat okay so all right stuff's happening things dying yep stuff dies hopefully some of our opponent's stuff dies well quicksilver is gonna disappear anyway so there's not really any reason to kill it so we're not dead yet and i guess we can crush and make our opponent sack but we can't really hurt our opponent very much unfortunately we hit for four three all right so we get to make an eight come on something good oh we're just death coil worming like crazy well go to combat why is this popping up? Uh, also get in with Sphinx. Annihilate our opponent. Now, oh, there we go. Uh, I wish they're only dealing half damage though thanks to this Gisela so they don't actually deal nearly as much damage as we would like Gisela is super insane all right opponent does some sacking maybe we can still win also I guess there's some slight chance of a timeout Bona blocks. I think since it's rounded up, won't they hit for four each? Maybe. I don't know. Too much math. <laughs> Very well could be math punning. 
Opponent makes a seven. Oh, Tarka. Well, thankfully you have Sphinx. They can only really kill our... Oh. Oh, it doubles a, a Tarka damage? Oh, no! Oh, boy. All right, we're on the timeout plan. Yup, there goes a worm. There goes our dragon. Things are looking super grim. We need we need the bounce crack in. Oh, it's like an eight power first striker. All right, we take eight. Come on, deck. Bounce crack in. Hover guard sweepers. Platinum Imperion. Those are the three cards. Angel of Deliverance. I don't even know if we live in another turn here. I don't think so. I think that just does it. I guess we should have got in for three with the Sphinx. Opponent. Phage? No Phage. <sighs> yup, yup. Nope. Yep. All right. Well, we block here. We should have attacked with Sphinx there. All right. Let's just do this. <laughs> Hopefully something dies. Angel of Deliverance would be good if we had Delirium, but we don't. All right, come on, Bounce Kraken, Platinum Imperion, Hoverguard Sweepers, one of you three. Oh, the Hellkite. Hellkite is not good enough. Well, we get in for three, gain three. Dragonlord Attack is 16 by itself. We need our opponent to hit a Phage. Come on, Phage. Uh. Oh, uh, that's 12 hasty power. Now we're definitely dead. Well, we cannot get past the Gisela. Yeah, yup, yup. Yup. Good game, good game, good game. Oh, Chancellor of the Forge. I can't believe that worked for our opponent. They went on the seven drop plan. The very untraditional seven drop plan but it worked out really well good game mini cory good game uh mental spaz two months in a row welcome to the fishbowl thank you for your subscription big scoops here for our new subscriber uh anyway i think that brings us to the end so mono redtron eh kind of a bust we'll play something maybe a little more something little less Tron, let's say, on Thursday. Uh, Momir, glad we got to get it in. So I think that brings us to the end of the stream, which means it's reminder time. So if you want to relive the glory or horror of Mono Red Tron, you can head over to the Replay YouTube. The YouTube channel, that's where you can find all the Ixalan spoiler coverage, Against Odds coming out tomorrow, Commander Clash on Friday, all that sweet stuff. And, of course, the merch page with tokens and t-shirts and playmats, etc., etc. So, thank you so much to everyone for hanging out. You all are amazing. Thank you for the donations and the subscriptions. Big thanks to all of you as well. So, it was awesome, everyone. It was a bunch of fun. Super happy. And we'll be back on Thursday for another one. So, until Thursday, have a wonderful evening. Have a great Wednesday. And I will talk to you soon.